Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode, we're going to be talking about almost all of the Empire chases being spoiled, as well as answer a ton of listener questions. This is episode 386. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, the back some Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. And now, word from our sponsor. Hi there. I'm Jack Monroe. And I believe in a better world. A better world for tabletop gaming and a better world for you. Now, we all know in these dark and trying times... It's not possible for everybody to go to their favorite brick-and-mortar store and play Heroclix or any board game. But thanks to me, Jack Monroe for Senate of Board Gamers and Gamers United, we're going to change all that. We're going to make everything a cooler. That's right. I get your stuff from a, some kind of toad. I've never trusted a frog a day in my life. You can get cool stuff from CoolStuffInc.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Dialage for Hero Clicks and the Jack Monroe for Senator of Board Games and Board Gamers United is brought to you in part by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Click singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And thanks to the boys at Dial H for Hero Clicks, they've got that awesome discount code DIAL5. That's right, D I A L 5, for 5% off your Hero Clicks order. So why buy from a troll? You can get cool stuff. And stop oh, every day. Jeez. Okay. Hey, thanks, Jack. I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, you've got my vote, definitely, wow. Jack. So uh, yeah. thanks for thanks for popping in. I, I will say, Jack sounds really familiar. Um, yeah, I, I, can't, like, I can't place it. It's a I, little too. It's a little too raw. Uh, one of uh, the audio is one of those. Uh, I can't quite place. I think he's got one of those voices. Sterling voice. I just yeah. Can't, that that really raw yeah. sterling I, mm. man i don't know where that i don't know like sterling silver uh just yeah. shiny and and beautiful um polished hey j- joining well I'm, I'm glad i got my mic back uh i of course am calder ness um and joining me in the studio like always is your dial h for hero who's champion uh the billion clicks bruce what's going on simeon oh yeah that's me it's time for layers halloween layers? is upon us and it's time <laughs> for layers yeah so just like how ogres are like onions, <clears throat> Midwesterners must also be like onions in these trying times and start wearing several shirts, several pants maybe, just to go outside and survive. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's been, it's been uh, okay. some cool days. Today topped out at 54 degrees, uh, mm. but this weekend we had some like 30 degree days, so it's... It's been nice. It's been nice. You know, it it is it is quite chilly outside. Um, I think you know my go-to pants hack is always the uh, wearing your sleeping pants on the inside of your your yeah, jeans. That's, that's actually just, yeah, that's what I did today. Um, see? Yeah, good thing to cut do. The, like the, so, the biggest problem when you're working outside in the cold, for me at least, is the wind. So, any kind of layer doesn't really have to be like a real thick layer doesn't have to make you sweat but any kind of layer that just stops the wind from like hitting your skin mm. that's that's what you need um but just i think like i'm gonna any... invest in like a wetsuit i'll just go full year all year round i'll be the wetsuit guy around town maybe get like a couple because i don't want to be stinky wetsuit guy so i'll just be like in a wetsuit keep all the heat in keep all the cold out and then in the summer i'll just die from dehydration because i will keep all the heat in i was about to say that will <laughs> that's a maybe maybe not a full year round type of idea but i can see the uh the point you could try to make wearing that in the winter uh you know in keeping your whole like body like not separated by like pants and shirt you know keeping all that body heat in kind of that one area is pretty good too you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Anyways, um, glad you're staying warm, Simeon. What 
what made you happy this past week, my man? Yeah, so the reason I like the cold is because it kills all the bugs, and I really hate bugs. <clears throat> well, it kills most of the bugs. Some of them try and get inside, but... I think a lot of people agree with you there. They're trapped in here with me. Um, that's what I say when, when the bugs <clears throat> get inside. I'm like, hi, stink bug. Welcome to my domain now. And then I make it watch all the newest Netflix original series with me. It's like, no, anything but this. And it goes out in the cold and freezes. Uh, no. Uh, oh, wow. Squid Game, I can't stand it. Ah, and then it goes outside because it hates Squid Game. Ah, mm. Don't don't explain these bugs to me. No, what, what made me happy is uh, Nebraska finally got some snow. You know, I was like, man, it's already October and no snow, but, you know, all of western Nebraska, and it's mostly, like, w- northwestern Nebraska, so I'm sure South Dakota got a little bit, too, because um, they truly Might've. are the northest Nebraska. Uh, but, yeah, mm-hmm. we got some okay. snow, and snow makes me happy. Okay, well, awesome. You know, I like snow a lot, too. I don't like it before Halloween because snow instantly puts me in the Christmas mood. I think that's, I think that's true for a lot of people. Um, and as much as I love Halloween, Christmas is my favorite holiday and I try not to get to, you know, whatever, but I I assume every time it snows, uh, being the fan that you are, you you just go, what's this? What's this? What's this? Or, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't know the song. I don't know how it goes. What's this? What's this? All the bugs are coming inside. (laughs) <laughs> and they, they get inside my burlap sack and they start yeah. threatening me with with death I'm like you're trapped in here with me ha 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 and then I roll some dice and force them to watch Squid Game available on Netflix what is with the Squid Game plug I don't I don't, I don't get it not, okay um, it's truly say, one of the worst dubbed shows I've seen in quite a while well, I bet it's I pretty bet. bad like the dub is pretty bad but who's going to want to do all that reading? The plot I don't want to read for eight hours. The plot is uh, overdone in media. So I really don't know what the appeal is, to be honest. Some of the characters are redeemable and like interesting, and like that helps the show a yeah. little bit. But like this plot has been done before better. Right. Like, this is times. just like... And this is literally what, like Battle Royale, Hunger yeah. Games, uh, yes. the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, it's all those death games uh, for money yeah. uh, or whatever. Man. Yeah. Running Man. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's all of those. Condemned. It's, it's very Stone Running Cold Man, Steve Austin. Running Man is like a for money kind of thing. I, yeah, mean, it is, I yeah. guess the other ones are for money too. So yeah, it's I like thought, those. It's like yeah. most of those. Um, yeah, exactly. I, so we'll get back to Squid Game here in a second. Um, but it's part of what made me happy this week. And what made me happy this week was going to Anime Nebraskon. Oddly enough, Anime Nebraskon, uh, was in Council Bluffs, Iowa, uh, yes. which I find incredibly hilarious to myself. Although they're very close, um, it's just funny. What's great um, is Omaha Con or Omaha Con or whatever they used to call it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess it's only happened a few years. Um, the very first and second one that they ever had, both of those were also in Council Bluffs. Really? And I was like, I can you really call it Omaha Con? I have to a, say like something, something about Iowa is just, it's very distinctly like, oh, yeah, this is Iowa. And by that, I mean it's trashy. I don't know how to say it <laughs> nicely. I can't think of any nicer way to put it. Iowa just looks like trash. Like you go, if you have ever been to Sioux City, you're like, oh, oh yes, the trash place. Um, Council Bluffs has that same Sioux City vibe to it. I don't know what it is about Iowa. I have yet to go to a town in Iowa where I'm like, this is not a garbage place. I'm not saying the people well, are garbage. I mean, I'm just Iowa saying City it feels Moines, like garbage. Which I mean, those are the metro places. Sure. Um, no, Council Bluffs' one redeeming quality is you just like, don't talk about what I think you're going to talk about. <laughs> Would you think I was going to say Quaker Steak and Lube? <laughs> I was going to say Quaker Steak and Lube, yes. <laughs> like, the one redeeming factor about Council Bluffs is that I can get a steak while also conveniently getting my oil changed. <laughs> it is quite convenient. Um, no, I was going to say quite literally, like, the city's namesake, the, the bluffs are quite beautiful. Uh, oh, sure. You, like, drive I-29, you'll see them. 
that is pretty much in my opinion that's like one of like the only real redeeming qualities yeah. of that city for me so yeah, and i mean i go there constantly so i believe it yeah but there's just not a lot there it's like do you want to go to the casinos no do you want to do anything else probably stay in omaha uh do you need a tire rotation and a hamburger at the same time then I there guess it is. Because <laughs> there it is. Quaker steak and uh, lube can do that for you. No, so uh, just to run down, a, a few things that made me happy about NebraskaCon really quickly. So uh, mostly JoJo cosplays, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure cosplays uh, for myself. Um, I was also, for a very small amount of time, before I was died of shame, I was Steve Harrington from Stranger Things in his Scoops Ahoy outfit. Uh, could not stand wearing that. Um... I was like, I like Steve. I like him as a character. Um, wearing the outfit, this is the only time I ever felt actually silly in cosplay. And I've worn a lot of different cosplay, but man, did I feel like an idiot in his Scoops Ahoy uh, outfit. I genuinely felt stupid. So I had to take that one off. I think I maybe wore it for two hours. You should have gone. Uh, majority. You lube in that. I, oh gosh, yikes. Uh, I did t take a picture next to the Dippin' Dots stand in it because that is also ice cream of the future, whatever. Um, but I was mostly in Porio from Part 6, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which isn't animated yet, coming out in December. Uh, but he's basically a Cubs player is basically how he looks. Um, so that was funny. It was great going into a casino wearing that outfit uh, when I wanted to go get dinner that night. But yeah, so a Toph cosplayer walked up to my little brother and I as we were walking around, she asked for our pictures. Uh, we obviously posed, did whatever. And then at the end of it, she handed us a picture of who I, I can only assume is the main character from Squid Game. And it's just sort of him semi looking at the camera with kind of a, I don't know what how you would call it, like a little merp. I, would, would that be the expression on his face? He looked very, like, dead inside, I guess. He was, like, looking at the camera. He was dead inside, yet emotionless. Yeah. Um, and, like, that was, like, the picture. She handed us both this little picture, and I was like, you just, you just keep these, you just carry these around <laughs> to hand to people? Okay. And at that moment, that was the only time I ever wanted to watch Squid Game, just so I would have understood the joke. And my little brother explained to me something about a uh, cookie and then choosing a complicated shape. And then this was uh. his reaction to it or whatever. And I was like, Oh, okay, sure. Um, but yeah, that was funny. Uh, another thing that was funny was I had switched costumes to um, Joseph from part two when he is training because it was a masked event. So I was like, I'll wear a mask that makes sense. So it doesn't look like, a person wearing a mask, which is kind of lame in my opinion, but instead it's like, oh, a mask is part of the costume. So I had the breathing mask, Joseph Joe Star, um, and I was wearing that. At the Later, I went to Raising Canes, and one of the workers in the back uh, came up to the front and was like, "Are you Joseph Joe Star from Battle Tendency?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I am." It's like, dude, that's awesome. And yeah, a lot of a lot of points uh, for that worker at the Council Bluffs Raising Canes for understanding uh, my costume. That was pretty cool. So, um, and also I just like eating Raisin Canes. So it was just, it was all around just a great weekend. I had a lot of fun at NebraskaCon. I will say one thing. Um, I think conventions, and then I'll be done talking because we're, I'm talking for a bit. Conventions should be held at hotels. I don't like them at convention centers. I think if they're going to be at convention centers, they have to be those conventions where it's like, we have a bunch of famous guests and that's the only cool thing we have. But if it's a, anime convention where it's more about the people and the panels and the fun and like the party rooms and whatever else. Um, Nebraska con is really just one big party with your friends. It should be at a hotel. Yeah. It, I think it's, I think it will personally die if it keeps going to this same convention center. Um, I would prefer it go to Lincoln or anywhere else, but stay at a hotel. Um, What's I crazy think anime is conventions should be in hotels. Like That's Omaha it. Is <laughs> like, lacking for convention centers. And it's not like Omaha has any restrictions that Council Bluffs doesn't. But yeah, that being said, uh, the most disappointing thing that you told me from that was um, that like the dance floor slash just, I don't know what you would really call it. Um, like the schmooze room, like the, the room where everyone goes around and just like looks and like sees somebody that they want to talk to and like goes like there's not really anything to do in the room other than look at the other cosplays really. Yeah. The fact that, like, they didn't have that, like, that's, I don't know. Not that, like, I, I never participated in the dance room, but, like, all of my favorite memories from Nebraska Con were from in that room. Like, late in the evening, 
people get kind of wacky and wild. People ask for pictures constantly. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. That's like the, the, my most fun at a convention is being in cosplay and people like kind of fanning for you, but like not really. Cause you're yeah. not the actual person. They just like the character. I, I don't know. It's sad. The, um, it's real sad. <laughs> it's sad. It's real sad. Um, but yeah, so that is what made us happy this week. Let's go ahead and talk about all the crazy world of hero clicks in the news. Simeon, I think it is no surprise to anyone that the biggest draw that a set can have on your wallet is the chases that the set has. Um, that's probably the biggest draw for most I feel like for most people it is it comes down to what is the chase I will get out of the however many in my case or in my brick potentially or whatever, right? So now there's no more games that have to be being played. Uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Lee on Facebook for sharing these. Don't know if he's going to get in trouble or not. Don't know how he, he got so many pictures of just chases and then rare Deadpool rare that he decided Deadpool, to show yeah. him around. Um, but yeah, so we have uh, almost all the chases. We don't have Ricky Barnes or Norrin Rad, but I believe we have the rest of the chases. So just a rundown, that's Thor, the uh, so Thor, Herald of Galactus, Deadpool, Herald of Galactus, the Tony Stark, Demon in Armor, the Captain America, Thanos, the Sorcerer Supreme, Beast, the Venom Wolverine, the Venom Magneto, uh, the Blue Sentry, and then the uh, Horseman of War, uh, Hulk. All of those chases were, all the dials and cards were shown off this week, as well as the uh, Land Shark, Jeff, Deadpool. So we got a couple of high point beefy boy chases here, Simeon. Yeah. We're all gonna we're gonna do a quick rundown. The chases all feel very similar in the ways that they are very high points. Yeah. Not so, very it's yeah, it's hard to explain. Let's just go ahead and talk about it. Keeping in mind that like some of these figures just don't feel quite correct with the benched powers. And it's weird because this set is slightly well i think it literally only unbenched shape change everything else seems to be still bent sort of because yeah. there's plenty of characters that should have like a hypersonic even have like a power <sighs> that's i don't know called like subsonic flight uh where they don't get hypersonic <laughs> and then there's no super strength to be seen um yeah, there's just there's a couple powers that are missing. Of course, perplex. There's no perplex to be seen. Uh, but I'm gonna do a quick rundown, and then uh, we'll go back and do a like slightly deeper dive into some of the the figures that we want. So first up, that was exposed uh, is the the Thor, the Thor Odinson Herald of Thunder. So mm -hmm. Thor here has the Asgardian Cosmic Deity Herald and Ruler keywords number zero six two in the set. Real name Thor Odinson. Um, that's pretty much it. There's one trait, three special powers. One is a stop click that is only on one click. Uh, the special attack power is on two of the starting lines throughout like the dial, and then the special speed power is only on the two top dials. So speaking of dials, nine range, one lightning bolt, 300-point dial, 200-point dial, and 100-point dial. Uh, without going into any real detail, this figure is just way too overcosted at 300 points to be viable. Um, since Invincible is not a thing in the set, and there's not enough stop clicks on him to do a whole lot at 300 points, it's way too many points to to really justify when you could have like a Justice League. And this is strictly speaking of like meta like competitive will competitive have an effect on this figure's price right i think not i think the entirety of this figure's price is it's a really cool thor and it's probably the only time we're gonna get this uh <clears throat> herald of galactus thor really cool uh really cool flavor text on all of the powers uh, i've got the god blast power cosmic bleeding through enchanted uru uh, Herald of Thunder, power taken, not given. Like a lot of really cool stuff in that vein. But as far as the dial goes, the stats are impressive. It's just 
you will get out actioned at every point value other than the 100 point value and even on like the 200 point value and 300 point value the stats just defensively the stats aren't there it's an impressive like offensively but other than that it's just not doing a whole lot yeah Ah, Thor is just really sad. It, it sucks, but he is suffering from, uh, I don't know, God doom but even worse so, like worse than God yeah. Doom, because at least God Doom saw, like, play for a little bit, because he had, like, multiple stop clicks and, like, other cooler, like, you know, powers and uses and stuff. Yeah. But the whole not starting with any more than one bolt and everything else just really is really hurting this guy. Uh, next up, the Deadpool. You know, this is cool. This is the Deadpool on the surfboard. Only, you know, I think he suffers a lot, and I mean a lot, from his reducers being impervious for the first three. Anyway, so he's 175, flash 75, at eight range, power cosmic and team player, or cosmic energy and team player, excuse me. Uh, he does do this whole thing where he can choose an opposing character in range and line of fire, and on a four through six, that character can't use team abilities until your next turn, and that's free. So, like, that's kind of cool, getting rid of cosmic energy. You know, on a 50-50 roll, he improved movement, destroys blocking, uh, targeting, destroys blocking. The way the cards look, though, I have to say, um, there's not that big, like, burst symbol for the destroys blocking when moving through it or shooting it. It doesn't really, like, look obvious. So it honestly, to me, it just looks like they just uh, ignored blocking, like, without destroying it, because that's how it looked, genuinely. Which way so, better, if that Which is way better. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if people are just assuming that this is that's how it works, or if that's the new symbol for it. If it's the new symbol, it's not good. Yeah, it's just um, it's pretty light compared to the very filled in movement speed bubble and like target yeah. bubble. It's very light colored. He's got a you know one stop click. Then he has a you know special attack power when he has flurry prob. Um, it gives him Blaze Claws, Flying Steel Energy, Giant Reach 3, which is kind of cool. And if he KOs an opposing character, he can make an attack, but only to target a character that shares a keyword or team ability with the KO'd character, which gives him a lot of, like, sticking around power at that lower dial. Um, but besides that, he is not anything, he's like, once again, he's not anything special. He's like a running shot, pen blast, impervious prob piece, top dial. 75 point line, this is where it's really rough, is he's a charge blade, super senses, exploit piece. With no reducer top dial. Yeah. Uh, My which biggest is problem. Like, is, it's just. So, yeah. like, I've. Whenever I see a split in, like, the dial cost, um, a lot of people are like, is the top dial, like, the 175, is that worth 100 points more than 75? I always look at it as, like, that's a tangible point value on my team and uh, how hard is it to get hit to that lower dial? So, like, to get hit to click five, his 75 point line. And thusly, not really in the game, but kind of in the game, lose 100 points. Um, it only takes four pen damage. And it's like not any kind of special pen damage or anything else. Like, he's got a 19 defense with prob, but like that's pretty easily overcome in like this environment. Uh, there, like We've already seen several figures with like 12 attacks. So if this Deadpool was fighting himself so to speak, the first one that hit would take a hundred points away from the other one. And there's no way to regain that. Like there's no traded, uh, regen or like any way for that right. first Deadpool to get hit, to go back to like top click. It's kind of, I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to say the 175 point dial is interesting. It's just from like the purely, uh, will meta change this figure, we're not looking at the 175 point dial at all. There's no way. No. Oh, but yeah, that's basically Deadpool. He's got nothing crazy special that makes him unique. He doesn't do any crazy neat abilities. And we're going to find ourselves saying this a lot throughout yeah. these guys. Uh, or the point cost is just too much for him to be viable. And it's it's sad because the other thing at 175, he doesn't have two of the special powers that he comes with. Like the two special powers yeah. that he comes with. Yeah. Um, so now we're getting into like the, so this is zero six four demon in armor. Tony Stark has Latveria armor and scientist keywords, six range, two lightning bolts. Um, because there's not a lot going on, I'll just go in fully in depth with this figure. It's four clicks long, two clicks of sidestep, two clicks of mind control. Uh, first two clicks 
attack power is a 10 with TK, and then last two is an 11 with in-cap. The entire defense dial is a special defense that is defend and vulnerability. Demon and armor can reduce pen damage, which is a better version of invuln that basically makes invuln invincible, which is fine. Um, 18 defense with that. Uh, and then yeah. two damage across the four clicks with two clicks of outwit top dial and two clicks of prob bottom dial for 50 points. Not a terrible little um, sidestep TK outwit defend in Voln piece, stuff like that. Uh, there is one trait that does it. So one, it has the uh, minions of doom team ability, but that's been changed to when you KO a standard opposing character after resolutions, you heal one on a friendly character. I don't see yeah. this figure healing like at all ever <clears throat> almost. Um, but the one trait is I am Victor Von Doom and Dr. Doom is an honorable man. Uh, when a friendly character within range is attacked, the attacker cannot positively modify or replace their attack value. So any friendly character that demon and armor can see or no, not C. Um, just within six of yep. uh, demon armor. The attacking character cannot have their attack value positively modified or replaced, which is good. That's cool. Um, is it worth 50 points? I don't know. The defend is really cool. It'd be way cooler if it was like a 19 top dial. I think we've seen a 19 on like a Sioux Storm for 50, around 50, but I'm not going to like split hairs over it it's probably one of the more economically viable to be played chases that we're going to see and uh it's a very still a very bland chase it has one trait one special power and then i mean it's it's only got six standard powers thick but they yeah. they're split in a way that it's you'll probably never really see like click two or three you'll probably get hit to click four or just KO'd, yeah. but who knows? Also, I really not protected out wit, so that's might rough too. KO'd right away. I think if this guy was like twenty or fifteen points less, he would see like play. Just fifty points is just too much to pay for yeah. him. I think in sealed, he's a bummer of a chase to pull in sealed, but he is great, great support in sealed for fifty points. Yeah, um, it's a great support piece. Period. Uh, competitively. I think we've got better sidestep TKs. We've got better outwits. The r only real thing he's bringing to the table is that friendly characters within range trait uh, where they the attacker can't positively modify. It's like a weird world. Well, half weird world, but uh, at range. For more of like a Sheriff Steve type thing, yeah. but it's range yeah, Sheriff, Sheriff Steve, Steve. Which is good. You know, it's they better still, Sheriff Steve. Yeah, they could still increase their damage, I guess, with this. So, yeah. Which, it's not bad. It's just an 18 is not going to be like a hard hill for your no. opponent to get it past. It's not a, uh, you know, 18 is pretty much the standard defense. Um, so it is, it's just, meh. It's, it's not much. It ain't much. Uh, next up we have Thanos here, who is Team Ability Avengers, Cosmic Energy. Got a 150 or 100 point line. It's at 7 range. Uh, it looks like he's been clocking in at eight clicks of life or five clicks of life at a hundred points. A full dial of penetrating psychic blast, full dial of his damage power, full dial of his speed power, and he's got uh, impervious for his first three clicks and then invulnerability on his last five clicks. All of Thanos's like cool, cool stuff uh, depends on a character, a friendly character with the Avengers keyword dying. Or, no, sorry, just a character dying. So, when a friendly character, 50 points or more, oh yeah, it is with the Avengers keyword, is KO'd, give Thanos a control token. What do these control tokens do? Great question. We'll get there in a second. His speed power is charge and running shot. If Thanos has a control token once per turn when Thanos attacks after resolutions, another friendly character than four squares with the Avengers keyword may make an attack. I will assume that is, you know, may make an attack. Uh, no as free, or, at, yeah. you know, at no cost at or free or something like free. that. Uh, yeah, and it says a, another attacked. friendly character, so it wouldn't be like all friendly characters, which would be, right. it would be really cool. That'd be something worth trying to pull off. Uh, as is, here. this wording does nothing, so the second half of this power 
does nothing uh, until yeah. Wizkid's errata's this. His speed power is charge, running, shot, and basically does nothing else. <laughs> yep. Uh, so that's that's rough. Um, next up is damage power, which is leadership and prob. So he is a full dial of charge, running, shot, pen, blast, leadership, probability, control, with good reducers. Um, and then if Thanos has a control token, when he uses leadership, friendly characters with the Avengers keyword to modify the following combat values based on his leadership role until your next turn. So a 2 through 3, they get plus 1 attack. Uh, 4 and a 5, they get plus 1 damage. On a 6, if he rolls for leadership, they get plus 1 attack and damage. So uh, he's just, you know, for 150 points, 8 clicks of life, a 19 impervious top dial, does not reduce penetrating damage, does not have any stop clicks, does not have any ways to heal at all. Uh, he's just not good. He really isn't. He's just, you know, he doesn't have any sticking power. Yeah. He's, you know, he'll be a pretty solid tent pole, build your team around in sealed if you have some support to help heal him or even build around it. But, like, as it stands, he falls under kind of that whole Thor syndrome and all the other, you know, characters we're going to get to here in a second where he's got some neat gimmicks, but they're not that good. They don't push him into the competitive category. He's just kind of a big beefy boy that can run and shoot and punch and yeah. like that's it and, you know it's some very simplistic dial design am i using his charge like did my opponent tie me up well then i'm not gonna charge breakaway i'm not gonna run shot breakaway i'm probably just gonna punch did my opponent not like tie me up then i'm just gonna Unless... run shot pen side. like when would i yeah. not use penetrating damage Unless for so some weird. reason everybody on your opponent's team ESD. has like ESD or something, yeah. there's no reason not. I mean, cause, just because you deal penetrating damage when you shoot. So yeah. Why would I charge well, and not yeah, deal his, penetrating damage? His like you know? effective range for most of his dial is six to six or five. It's most of the dial at six, and then it's five for charge. Right, and then you add another seven to that for his <laughs> running shot. So it's like exactly. not really a great like trade off there. Um no, I do not like characters that depend like the cool thing depends on a friendly character dying. I don't like making especially in this case where the friendly character has to be 50 points or more. That's a huge chunk. And it's not like I can KO and revival and not KO them but kind of K like there's no wiggle room like you lose 50 points and then this 100 to 150 point piece is now able to fully use its powers, of which it has two special ones. Yeah, I'm not a huge I, fan of that. Uh, uh, even then, the powers aren't that good. Like a potential, like let's just say, on average, you give your friendly characters plus one attack each turn after a character dies, and then yeah. you maybe, you know, get a free attack every and turn. The, the like, is that I worth it about for a character dying? It's not a great trade off for losing, especially a fifty point character, because that's not like a yeah, that's not a support like a little tiny nothing. That's probably oh. a tertiary attacker, um, or it's like uh, something that's integral to your strategy. Like, I mean, not even Mister o- Mister Oz is only forty, so that's like a demon in armor who is keeping your opponent from increasing their attack values. You have to lose yeah. that, but it, it has to be somebody with an Avengers. Did he have Avengers? I don't know. But something along those lines. Fifty points is not nothing. I mean, yeah, no, yeah, you absolutely. Know, Vulture Prime was fifty points. Sure, it's like not necessarily like losing that, but it's losing something equivalent. Next up is zero six six, and this is Beast with the Avengers, Defenders, Illuminati, X Men, Animal, and Mystical keywords. Um, real name: Doctor Henry McCoy. This is the first chase that we see with a rally die, and this is a blue rally die, which is friendly attack rolls. If you remember, red is opposing attack rolls, blue is friendly, and the green is both. Uh, This is a one or two. So uh, this rally die gives free remove beast's rally die. If you do choose one, beast has power cosmic until you choose again. Or the other option is this turn, friendly characters have the X-Men team ability and can use it as free. Um, so cosmic energy, I guess, not power cosmic. But uh, Beast himself has the X-Men team ability and the Mystics team ability normally. Being able to get protected out wit 
and a willpower roll is pretty cool because you get that until you choose again. So if you, you know, Moira McTaggart Beast turn one, you can just get Power Cosmic for the whole game. You don't have to ever remove another Rally Die to choose again. But if you do, being able to use the X-Men team ability as free is pretty cool. Uh, it will damage a lot of your friendly characters, most likely, but it is pretty cool. And then uh, the rest of Beast style is kind of... I don't know. It's just kind of wonky and weird. So uh -huh. Beast has six range triple lightning bolts. He's got some charge blades with a special defense and damage with the charge blades, of which there's a total of four. So the first two clicks, the fifth click, which happens to be his second starting line, and then the last click, which is click eight. So eight clicks long in total. Two point values, 125 and 75. The special defense and damage that appear on those charged blades clicks is defend and vulnerability and super senses, which not a terrible combo. So top dial at 125, he's got a 19 last click, which good luck ever landing on it. Also a 19 for that defend. Um, and then the special damage power is outwit probability control when beast uses outwit until your next turn the chosen power also can't be used by opposing characters mm. if they are within four squares of beast and then opposing characters within range can't use safeguard outwit or protected outwit which his range being six doesn't say line of fire but essentially anytime you're outwitting with beast they're not protected outwit that's probably the coolest thing about this beast. Uh, his other four clicks that I didn't mention are sidestep, energy explosion, super senses, prob, with nothing else of note on those powers. So if this guy sees any play, it'll be at 75 points where he has charge blades, that special defense power, that special damage power, and you'll be able to give him like a rally token to give him protected outwit because that, that outwit power is cool. Here's the thing, though. It can yeah. be outwitted if he doesn't have Power Cosmic. So your opponent's right. like, oh, like, I'll just get my Power Cosmic back by outwitting your outwit or your uh, special power. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all this beast is, which is everything. I listed everything that he does, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's... And all that he does is still not enough. It's still just like four it's clicks still, for 75 points yeah, for or 75 points, eight clicks just, for 125 for a charge piece. Like You have to build around him. And like, do you really want to build around this 75 point piece that like, what's he, what's he doing? Is he just getting rid of maybe your opponent has safeguard outwit or protected outwit? Like, is he defending with his 18 top dial at 75 and his invul and super set? Yeah. Like, what's he doing that you're willing to sink? A Moira McTaggart, like to get his rally off. Like I, I, I don't know, because alternatively, like, uh, like yeah. your opponent just deals you like enough damage to get you on click six or seven, and then it's like, really, what is he doing? Because at that point, that sidestep energy explosion looks kind of silly for seventy-five points. It's weird when a character has six range triple bolts, and then they're like. And range you don't clicks want them to be are their range. worst. Like on the yeah. range clicks, yeah. Yeah. You absolutely do not want him on his range clicks because those are garbage compared to like his actual, like what he's actually supposed to be doing. Hey, speaking of garbage, and you know X Men because mutants are garbage. We have a uh, Venom Wolverine, aka Venom X twenty three. Uh, she's seventy five points. She has zero range. Team player X Men team ability. Codex, Detective, Monster, Weapon X, X-Force, X-Men are all of her keywords. Uh, man, is she real bad here. Uh, symbiotic Fusion is the trait versus the alien symbiote trait, uh, and that is going to give them plasticity and super senses, oddly enough. Uh, and then See, Venom Wolverine. Only super senses from the Venoms and the symbiotes. Yeah. No, shape change is only unbenched for those scrolly boys, uh, so it would seem. Uh, if Venom Wolverine is within four squares in line of fire of an opposing character, she cannot be targeted by ranged combat attacks, which is pretty solid, actually, for a charge piece, so I yeah. really liked seeing that. Um, it's a good second thing because they're... So the symbiotes don't have... What did they have traded? Plasticity, Super Senses, automatically break uh, away. Auto so they, break away, they, yeah. They lose the auto break away, but they get this real neat uh, dolphin slash... 
WWE team ability kind of thing. Right. Behind the scenes, whatever you want to call it. Um, the second trait, also really good, what you want to see for a charged piece. And that is the whole uh, Giant Reach 2 free. If Animal Wolverine has two action tokens, make a close attack. So always attacking. Uh, so with Giant Reach, that gives her an 8-square uh, reach top dial with her 12 speed, which is really, really good. I really like that. Sadly, of course, no improved movement, which is a little rough. Um, also, uh, and then that's weird it. For both an X-23 and a The Venom character, yeah. yeah. So it's odd. Um, I don't get it. But yeah. alas, here we are. So uh, they do get, start with a 12 attack with exploit weakness, 3 damage, 18 defense toughness, uh, and like I said, 12 speed charge. Get some special stuff later. When the dial rolls on to a sidestep piece and then a uh, uh, one final click of charge there at the end. So they do have stop toughness regen at the very end of their dial so on their click seven they have that excuse me click six i can't count yeah i don't um, think to be fair i don't think you're ever rolling regen with this figure no no like I especially so. on a stop click because a stop will uh, reduce regen by one but yeah, go ahead. Go on to the the big. Attack. The big reason you're definitely not rolling regen is uh, the last three clicks have this special attack power, which blades, claws, fangs. When Venom Wolverine uses it, after resolutions, heal her equal to half the D6 result. So exactly what Simon said. It's basically the same as regen. So why wouldn't you just make an attack instead? Uh, which is really good. So this also helps with her whole when she has two action tokens, make a close attack. So it can give you some sticking around power. Once again, it's just a 75-point charge blades piece. It's a secondary attacker at best. It doesn't do anything yeah. that cool. Um, so it's not going to see competitive play necessarily. However, the sculpt is amazing. If you like playing Venoms, because uh, I really like playing Venom characters whenever I can, you're going to love this. I think all these Venom figures, if you're a fan of Venom and a fan of like the way the sculpts look and everything, I think you're going to have to track all of these down because they are really amazing. And as far as like a charge Venom figure goes, she is probably the best alternative Venom character that does the whole charging thing really, really well. So... I like her in that regard. As far as competitive goes, no, 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 not good. Not seeing play, but amazing sculpt. Really cool. Yeah. Uh, charging into the weekend, as whiz kids would say. Um, so, yeah. Right. Uh, I really like this the the trait that protects. So, if you're within four in line of fire, you can't be targeted by range attacks. Helps you get the drop, yeah. quote-unquote drop, on like a character. Um, that combined with plasticity can help you like top dial you're probably just a blanket 20 now your opponent can outwit all of these powers except the stop click um i don't know i i want to think with the free attack and the giant reach that it's possible but really the giant reach two square giant reach is hardly anything that's you know not adjacency that's one square away from adjacency uh I think if it had exploit the entire dial or if it was 25 points less, I know that like that seems crazy to say like 50 points for a stop click and blah, 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 but we've seen it before and like this would not be game breaking even at that. Um, but it seems like a weird combination of like almost spider hammer eye with, I don't know, a little bit of sticking around power, but like, what am I going to do if uh, my opponent knocks me to, like, click three and then they just outwit my charge and then I have to spend the rest of the game, like, walking up to them? You know, I could, you know, my opponent yeah. doesn't have to KO or, you know, alternatively, they just sink, like, three attacks into her at the same turn because that stop regen toughness and blades healing thing only works if you don't get KO'd first. And this is way too high of a piece to be doing Krakoan Revival stuff with. Uh, dropping 75 points to your opponent is not great. So, I don't know. I, I'd i like to believe in it, but I, I just sadly cannot because... I want to believe. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Venoms and X-Men's, uh, we've got Venom Magneto. And now this is a figure that I think is actually really worth 
this is like one of the few because of the point splits that it has three point splits um but yes of course real name max eisenhart who wouldn't know that oh i yeah totally that's the real name knew that last name was yes and first name max of course uh Keywords are Acolytes, Brotherhood of Mutants, Hellfire Club, X-Men, Codex, Monster, and Ruler. So it works on a Xavier swap team or a Magneto swap team. And because mm-hmm. it doesn't share uh, the name with Magneto, you could kind of actually swap the Hellfire Club X or Brotherhood Hellfire Acolyte Magneto for Venom Magneto and just be three po- or five points short on the bottom dial. It's, oh, okay. it's interesting. Um, anyhow. Codex Monster Ruler. Uh, it's got the same symbiotic fusion trait, which is plasticity super senses, and then cannot be targeted from a range attack if you're within four squares in line of fire of an opposing character. Uh, another trait is symbiotic magnetic field, whatever that means. Uh, energy <clears throat> shield deflection and passenger four, which is always good to have a uh, pretty solid taxi. Special attack power, symbiotic magnetic mastery, this grants Magneto telekinesis and then telekinesis as free. Uh, we haven't seen this in a, like a hot second, but this is definitely a power that we've seen before. I um, think like the most recent I remember is the chase Jean gray that had TK and TK as free. Oh yeah. But this is better than that because I think her TK is, her free is limited. shorter. Yeah. So yeah, this is like, like three full TK as free. Um, and then symbiotic supremacy is the, damage power which is leadership when venom magneto uses it and succeeds you may instead remove an action token from another friendly character with the monster keyword within range and line of fire and give an action token to an opposing character adjacent to that character wow what a bunch of cool stuff action token removal and giving um yeah it's leadership with extra steps that one's it's okay the hundred point dial is actually viable for a hundred points so it's seven clicks long uh, it's got all the stuff that I said with running shot, that special attack power, invuln, and that special damage power, 12 attack, 4 damage, 18 defense, 12 speed, 8 range, 2 lightning bolts. I don't think it's amazing because it's just invuln super senses defensively, but if you get within 4 squares, because what you could do is you could running shot, shoot 8 squares, hit somebody, TK yourself within 4 squares of that person, now you can't be... Uh, or TK yourself adjacent for all I care, whatever. Now you can't be range attacked, which is pretty big. There's not a ton of pen damage for close. Um, a much weaker dial is the 75 point line, which is sidestep TK toughness. That's a 10, 11, 17 for three. And the three is that special damage power that the whole leadership that's slightly better than normal leadership. And then for 35 points, bottom dial is 35 points. You get the exact same thing as the top dial, except you just have normal leadership. That that beautiful leadership power that I thought was so amazing. Instead of that, you just get normal leadership. And I don't know what you're going to do with that for 35 points. Other than having TK and then TK as free with an 8 speed, 10 attack, 16 defense, and 2 damage. Again, still got all the same traits the passenger four the esd the uh protected from range all that stuff got brotherhood of uh, mutants team ability and the x-men team ability so i think 35 points might see play with all those keywords i think you could include this on a hellfire club like swap team or an x-men swap team if you need a double tk um because you can TK him up like six and then an, another, I guess, two because you can't go past your range. But like an eight square TK isn't anything to sneeze at. Uh, that's decent. And then also you could just like, I don't know, carry four people for 35 points. And that's pretty solid. Carry four people, TK one at the end. There's a ton of viability with this figure. And that's yeah, probably, I, probably the last geez. time you'll hear me say that when we're yeah. talking about these chases. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, I do. I really do kind of like this Venom Magneto. I think he's really neat. And you now a monster taxi. Very yeah. solid. I don't I don't think we have a lot of monster taxis either. For, so for 35, I mean, yeah, for 35, 35 you know, you don't have to sidestep, but 
eight squares is nothing to say yeah, that. I, I definitely do wish he had the sidestep. The change to carry does give this eight squares a bit more punch. And the TK is free is great. So I think I think he really shines at 35. But what you're saying about like the 100-point line is he has enough going for him at 100 points. I think it, it can justify that 100-point cost as well. So I, I do dig this Magneto. Uh, next up, we got old, old Rob Robert Reynolds here, uh, the Century, Cosmic Energy, six range, one bolt. He's a, he's 150 points, or he's 50 points. He's Avengers, Cosmic, Dark Avengers, and Horseman for keywords. He's got two traits and a special speed power. Oh, man. Eight clicks of life, or old, old Bob here. He's got 10,000 exploding suns. Sentry can reduce penetrating damage, so he has impervious That's his first two clicks. That's S-U-N-S, not S-O-N-S. Yeah. Yeah, no, not a bunch of um, yeah, not a male lot, children. Not a bunch I of, guess not a bunch of boys um, exploding. It's it's yeah, the, the big shiny things in the sky. The thing in the, yeah, that thing. Ten thousand. So imagine if that blew up. Yeah, ten thousand. That's like a lot. It's like a lot, yeah. a lot. Uh, he can reduce penetrating damage. He's gotten pervious the first two clicks. Invuln for his next three clicks, and then toughness on his last three clicks. So. I would like to have seen more impervious and invulnerability and maybe just, I don't know, no toughness at all. Uh, yeah. But here we are. Oh, you um, mean I somebody guess. that's powered by 10,000 exploding suns? 10,000 exploding suns. Toughness. Yeah. Someone that has a, a flavor text that says more powerful than you can dream of. Guess what, Bobby? I can dream of things more powerful than toughness. Jeez. Yeah. I really... It's, it's uh, rough. Mm, I don't like it. You, Shall, shall you continue to, to poop on Bob here? No, <laughs> Do you want to just really let into old, old Bob Reynolds? His flavor text is... It's boring. It is boring. It's boring. I, I love the the hovering menace, menacingly or whatever for Ominous. his sidestep. Yeah. Ominously, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah it's so just, funny. Don't mind me with my, uh, my 10 attack and 9 attack just hovering here ominously. Like what? Do you okay. think you're scared of him at that point in his dial? Are you scared? Is that the ominous no. Bob Reynolds here that you're no. scared of? I don't think you're scared so. of Sentry. Like in canon, you are always scared of Sentry. Like regardless of who you are, unless you're like Odin or maybe Thor, or like you know Hyperion, like one of those guys. But right, any normal Marvel person is terrified of Sentry. On the last two clicks, Wolverine's not scared of Sentry. Cyclops yeah. isn't like uh, Cat, Punisher isn't scared of Sentry. Uh, um, no, like the no. Electra. There's a lot of people not scared of Sentry. Anyone the with a not knife, scared of Sentry. Apparently, uh, that can deal you know two damage is not scared of Sentry on click seven and eight as yeah. he's hovering ominously. Because that's all. He, that's all he'll be doing is hovering. Anyways. Um, his other trait is when he KOs an opposing character after resolutions, roll a d6. This is, I guess, to balance him, but it's not like, okay, roll a d6. He kills somebody, right? One to two, you deal him an unavoidable damage on a three through six, you remove an action token from him. So obviously, to just take a token off. So between that and cosmic energy, he might be, you know, going turn, turn after turn after turn. But dealing him one unavoidable damage on the one through two is really bad. Like, that's really, that's a bummer. Um, and then his special speed power, he only has for the first three clicks of his top dial. So 150 points. You have to pay 150 points to get this. 150 points to get this. All right, ready? Flurry, charge, but do not have speed, period. That's it. So what Sky so Tyrant Sonic can do Sonic. at 50 points and 100 points, <laughs> yes. Rob, oh, Bob here can only do it at 150 points, and also it's still not as good. He is so bad. No. Um, because, Sentry yeah, is uh, garbage. I mean, yeah, Sky Tyrant, well, we don't need to rehash Sky Tyrant, but no, we comparatively, know it way more sticking power. Um, uh -huh. I have to assume the Horseman of Death trait... Is entirely flavor based because dealing one unavoidable damage to your character for KOing, like for literally doing the thing that this game is designed to do, for like, good job, you actually, you know, you KO'd a character, dealing one unavoidable, which is interesting that they once again have brought back unavoidable while having bench powers. Um, but that's besides the point. Just a strange, strange thing. Sadly, 
if that knocks him from click one to click two, you have a much better character. A charge flurry 11 for four pen damage is much better than his top dial 12 for four, nothing. And then also you heal. So, like, that's also, like, way better. Yeah. I mean, uh, dude, he's just... Okay, also, like, maybe you guys missed it right away. I said Sentry had six range. He's got no... There's no point in his dial where you'd rather shoot somebody than punch somebody. No. He's got exploit weakness, close combat expert, mostly charge. So there's only one point in his dial is when he's hovering ominously on those last two clicks with sidestep, where if you can't reach somebody with sidestep, close combat expert, you can at least shoot somebody. Can I also say the way the power combos feel in this uh, in these chases does not feel like a Wonder Woman um, power change power set, if I'm being real with you. Um, uh, just for a lot of these, it doesn't quite seem. A lot of them seem like they're using the whole gosh. Wonder Woman how powers work to their advantage. They're I mean, all very similar normal power sets we're used to seeing since like Mighty Thor on stuff like so, seeing sent- this Sentry here with no special attack or you know not even a special attack, just zero well, yeah. attack power top dial, zero damage power top dial. Seeing these like weird white gaps in the. Uh, what used to be like very filled out dials, right? Is becoming like more of a norm than anything else, and I, I don't necessarily like it. Um, not that I think that it's like you know necessary to have every single power under the sun, but like man, when it's a chase and it's 150 points, I sure would like to have all of my power slots filled in some variation. Even if it's like not on dial, if I'm able to pick something, um, and then we'll we'll go into our last, I think our last big beefy bruiser guy, big beefy boy, uh, and that is the Hulk. So this is Horseman of War. So Horseman of Apocalypse, uh, the Horseman War. So Hulk here, Doctor Bruce Banner has the Horseman keyword, armor, brute, and monster keywords. Um, yep. No, no Avengers to be spoken of, uh, but mm, can charge mm. or can move through characters and blocking uh, special speed ability there. Two point values, 225, and then oh boy. where there's like a very, very blatant split after click four that would go to click five, six, and seven. There's no alternative point value for those ones. No, 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 no. Second point value is 50 points, 175 point difference. 50 points will get you the last three clicks, arguably almost as good, like not even, like not even arguably 225 points top dial. You have a 12 speed charge, a 10 attack. That's right. For 225 points for the low, low price of 225 points, you can get up to a 10 attack. That's amazing. Beautiful. Uh, You get an 18 defense with impervious and a four damage with exploit. Now, what could I possibly get for 175 points less? It'd have to be something ridiculous. So a 10 speed. Okay, good. Charge. Okay, so two less speed. That makes sense. So clearly my attack will be like an eight. Nope, nope. Same exact attack value for 225 points. For 50 points, you get a 10 attack value. Your defense is a 17 instead of an 18, and your damage is the exact same. Why am I ever playing this Hulk at 225? Well, because he mysteriously gets real good on clicks 5, 6, and 7, but there's zero stop click. There's zero way to make sure that you knock your, like, that you get knocked to those. So we'll get into his dial here, but yeah. Um, on clicks five, six, and seven, like uh, this is just assuming entirely your opponent is silly enough to hit you to one of these and not just straight past them. Uh, Hulk gets almost the only part in his dial where he gets a special speed power that is charge flurry, uh, simple charge flurry, rage given purpose, brutality given form. Cool, it is really cool. Uh, 12 attack. For two of the clicks with a five damage close combat expert, meaning you're a 13 for six and then a 12 for five. Uh, the only other place he gets this charge 
Flurry is on click 9, where he has Exploit and Steel Energy, which could heal you to this as long as you played him at 225. That's maybe the only good reason to play him at 225 is because maybe you get to heal him back to this. Uh, so then there, he's got, with that trait, uh, the second horseman of death war, t- second horseman of apocalypse war. Uh, if an opposing character was damaged this turn, you modify Hulk's attack by plus one. If an opposing character was KO'd this turn, you modify his attack plus two. So again, on those mid clicks, you could hit potentially a 14 or 15 attack. Uh, top Ooh. dial, you could see upwards of a 12 attack. Wow. At 50 points, upwards of a 12 attack. Wow. And that's assuming no perplex or anything. Um, special attack power that he has on clicks 1 through 4, and then on his starting dial for click uh, 8, which is 50 points. That special attack is Blades, Claws, Fangs. When Hulk uses it, also deal damage equal to half the D6 result to each untargeted opposing character adjacent to Hulk. Now, the least he can do on those clicks, because they're all four damage at least, one's five damage, but the least amount of damage he can do is three. If you roll a six, that means that anybody that's adjacent and untargeted takes three damage that's pretty cool. Uh, alternatively, if you roll like a one or a two, they're still taking one. As long as they don't have a reducer, they're going to take one. Uh, and then if you roll like a three or a four, they could take two. That's how numbers work. And then he has a singular stop click, which is stop invulnerability, regeneration, safeguard, opposing prob control. Uh and then lastly, this Hulk is a giant, so you do have that 3 through 6 willpower roll. I think this Hulk has some potential at 50 points because you do have charge, you do have blades, you do have that interesting effect, you have 4 damage exploit, you have uh, cosmic willpower, and you have giant size, well, you have giant size willpower, and then you have cosmic energy, which protects you. Um, but man... That's 225 points of, like, unusable in any kind of competitive setting kind of figure. And it's really sad because, geez, like, had had we just gotten that charge flurry top dial with that special attack and close combat expert or exploit or whatever, had we just gotten those numbers kind of swapped around, the 225 wouldn't feel so bad. Had there been a second stop click, we've had Hulks with multiple stop clicks before. Had there been a second stop click on click five with like, a, uh, I don't know, literally anything. I could have seen this character doing a little bit more. Um, sadly, with the keywords and the 50 point dial being the only viable thing for any kind of competitive play, I just do not <laughs> yeah. see it getting played over sky tyrant or any of the other good 50 point charge options nope it's just it's the same thing with all these chases it's just a lot of points well and imagine and for 225 to... points imagine that you end up at any point in the dial with a nine attack and that the average attack value you have is a 10 that's ridiculous yeah, that is truly bad. and i i don't say this to be like mean to whoever designed this figure uh because i do think that it's like hard to make a full set i, I imagine that it's real rough it does not ever make sense for 225 points to have a 10 attack be the average my first three clicks no matter who the character is i get the hulk gets angry and so he gets like better as it goes on for 200, like, don't make it 225 points then. Make it, like, I don't know, 125 points, and I would have contemplated that top dial. 125 points, that top dial doesn't look so bad. But 225? Like, you've got to be kidding me. That is that is absolutely ridiculous. Like, I, I can't even imagine this guy at 225 points taking, like, down even... Uh, like three years ago, like let's say an, an ID less ID card list team three years ago, 225 point this character versus like that 300, zero chance. This figure just does not do it. 
if it yeah. had some sort of protected like pen damage or like anything else uh if like the the stat boosts were for attack and damage maybe i don't know but as is ah uh, it's a waste <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, I wish we had a happier note, but that is the Empire Chases. I think people love seeing chases, um, and yet these were all pretty, you know, big bummers. Now, to be fair, I will say this. We've had sets in the past where the chases all kind of suck, but there are a lot of standouts, i.e. check out the Captain America and the Avengers set. All the chases are really plain and boring and have one or two gimmicks, and uh, but there's a lot of super rares rares that are actually kind of neat or generics or standout figures so i am still hopeful that there are some standout figures in the set this doesn't make me particularly excited for what noran rad or ricky barnes can do they will also probably be fairly bland uh but i don't think it's gonna weigh too hard on what i was gonna buy the set anyways i wasn't planning on buying a ton so yeah the chases are a huge bummer i do feel a little bad uh, for Scotty P, but he can wipe his tears with money. So I mean, him not being able <laughs> to uh, open the chase, Nornrad, or or at least one Ricky. of the ones with really cool flavor uh, text. Yeah, like, you know, oh. I wouldn't mind learning more about the Thanos Captain America and like a few other figures sure. on these, or like the Harold Thor. Like and the sculpts, he's, he's really got cool. a lot of so, like, a lot of knowledge in his noggin. So. I, I poo pooed a lot on like most of these figures. That Thor, I think, will stick at least at like seventy five dollars for a long time because it's a really cool sculpt and it is fun and casual. And that's you know, obviously, when we talk about this stuff, we're talking about like is competitive going to change the price? Because casually, all of these are like good. You can make any any piece fun and casual. That Hulk that I just really slammed casually your opponent's probably not gonna like be like oh i must maximize the damage i'm gonna psychic blast him for three and then wait yeah. to psychic blast him for another three because i don't want to hit him onto like no your opponent's probably never gonna do that your opponent's right. probably just gonna have fun with you casually unless you play at like one of those horrible awful venues where it's always competitive all the time uh, but if that's the case then you know you're already there so what can i do for you um no, I, I think a lot of the sculpts are really solid, really cool. And I'm still excited for the set. I'm just... With this being, like, the biggest takeaway that we've had so far, it's not looking great. If this is, like, no, the, the flavorist the chases get, and I'm like, ugh. I'm guessing super rares and rares are going to be worse than this, and then commons and uncommons are going to somehow be worse than that. Ugh. I, I um, hope they go all in with at least the super scrolls and the Ultrons and stuff, though. Like, because I really want Ultron to be really cool, especially that Hank Pym Ultron, as far as flavor goes. Um, yeah. Same thing with like the super scroll figures. Uh, but we'll have to see. Um, let's go ahead and start wrapping up the show, and we're going to jump into community. There are dozens of us. We have a ton of questions. We skipped questions last week, and now we're paying the price this week. Turns out, even though we skip questions, people still like to ask us more and pile on quite a bit, which we love. We love getting questions. Don't get me wrong. We just have a bunch to answer now. So we're going to try to rattle through these uh, as best we can so you guys don't have to listen to a three-hour podcast this week. All right. Uh, starting off with the Discord, we got Bill saying, seeing as Empire looks like it's going to feature a lot of non-616 characters, who would you like to see clicks in the set? Now, obviously, we all know how many figures are clicks in the set, so he changed his answer a little bit. So he says, now that my question is somewhat invalid, what non-616 characters do you wish had been clicks in this set? Uh, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, as far as non-616 characters, uh, obviously, this is going to be pretty consistent for me across the board, is any, like, Captain America-style figures. So, like, the Captain America core, uh, obviously, besides Bucky, Steve Rogers, and Sean Walker, the rest of the Captain America core who haven't been clicked are all non-616 versions. So that's going to be uh, the, not Isaiah Bradley, I forget his name, but the Captain America great-grandson of Isaiah Bradley, or I actually think Luke Cage or something like that. Um, but I think he is a Bradley. Um, him, he would be cool. And, of course, American Dream from, like, Avengers 2. And everybody from that, like, weird universe, that American Dream 
is in could also be Clix, which would be cool. I think the Wasp from that universe is Clix and also in 616 somewhat. But there's also like a weird take on Juggernaut in that universe. That's cool. And a few different characters that I would like to see Clix. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I would look forward to. Uh, Simeon, 616 characters. Non-616 characters you wish were in this set. Um, I think so... I don't. I know that they're like actually in comics. I just can't think of what comics. But uh, like the next Avengers, the the heroes of tomorrow, the kid Avengers, the kids. Yeah, I would like to movie. see those clicked at some point. And I'm not saying that this would have been the best time. Obviously, I have not read all the way through Empire, but it being a, an Avengers, Fantastic Four, X Men, like the first set that's combining all of those again. Um, it would have been cool to like have like a chase theme that was kind of like along those lines. Um, I do like the chase theme, whatever. I guess it's not even a theme. It's just kind of a hodgepodge. I do like the chases. We've got, you know, several uh, alternate versions of characters. Yeah, yeah. essentially. Yeah, we've got it's Harold yeah. or yeah, we've got like some, you know, Iron Man. That's not Iron Man. Cap. That's not Cap. Uh, Beast. That's uh, usable. Um, stuff like that. No, uh, yeah, I, I'd really like to see, as far as on the Marvel front, something like that. I really like the alternative stories that take place in, like, the far future and, like, different things around those kind of storylines. And then I don't really know how you would clicks it, but the, like, the Max, the Marvel Max, which is, like, the not PG-13 kind of series that Whoa. they do. Um, yeah, it's Talking Punisher. Uh, Jessica Jones. Yeah, it's like, Marvel the Punisher shot people, but like we showed it. You saw it. Like, very good Marvel. Like clap clap. Uh he kills he kills like I think it's ducks. There's like a special agent that's like following him and she's like, Not what? the ducks, Frank. And he just like murders a bunch of ducks that are flying in the way of his bullets. Um Well, I mean It's probably the worst thing he's done. Is that oh that's the worst thing he's yeah, done yeah. uh you could say it's a murder most foul <laughs> hey, let's yeah. get past that let's get past it now truly truly innocents were harmed that day when the death <laughs> um, yes but yeah those are my my two answers uh the right of tomorrow i really liked that movie it's kind of campy because again it's it's kids so they can't yeah. do anything like too crazy um they can't like kill off like tiny valkyrie or Little Cap or whatever their names are, James Rogers. Uh, they can't kill those characters off or like injure them terribly bad because they're children, or at least that was a fun children, movie though. It is a that yeah, was it fun. is a fun and good movie, and it's got like elements of some real comic storylines that we've seen, some like characters and stuff that yeah, uh, like the whole future seen. Maestro type deal, him being yeah. like the last person on Earth, like all that stuff. Yeah, like that's really neat. Um. Dance asked a question. We're going to skip it because it's kind of intuitive. A lot to it there. Uh, Alex goes in and says, very early hero click sets had ludicrous amount of figures um, that, of course, got three dials each, resulting in a set with nearly 200 figures. Set 47 is a full booster set with a fairly low amount of figures, 60 figures and seven equipment objects, according to the current solicit. What do you think is for sets? So I really like the 60... Uh, I don't like 60. I think 70 figures is good. I think more than 70, I don't like at all. I think 70 is solid. I think 7 equipment is a good choice for equipment. I think I don't want more than 10 pieces of equipment probably throughout the set. Uh, I would take 10 if it means we get some common or uncommon equipment. I'd be cool with that. I do miss that since the Mighty Thor. Uh, as far as sets go that are... Um, like XDPS when it has about like 50 to 55 yeah. figures and then it has the Colossals. Split, yeah. I, I think that's fine. I think I think that's okay. I would say they could pull back on the amount of super rare Colossals um, and that kind of stuff. Probably don't uh, need besides primes. That, probably don't need primes and sets like that either uh, with Colossals being the way they are. So yeah, I would say 70 figures I think is a fine amount. 
uh, for a set. I just, you know, I don't like pulling a lot of the same thing every time. And yeah, I think, yeah. but at the same time, I don't think set 47 is terrible with 60 figures. So I think 70 is a good, that's kind of their standard. And I think, I think that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, two of my least favorite full five booster sets are Elseworlds and what if, and those were both what I think like 50, 50 some low. figures yeah it was low yeah so yeah venom punisher is number 50 so yeah that was their f- two sets that were both uh 50 figures in each um just seems really weird in that like situation uh and they did so they did nix a few like the commons and some like the uncommons so it wasn't like you were pulling just as many commons and uncommons as normal you were pulling like more uh well it was the same ratio, but there were fewer of those in the set to pull. I should say, yeah. um, no, I, one of my favorite sets is Avengers defenders war. And that had 75, mm-hmm. uh, justice league Trinity war had something along like the, I don't know, somewhere in like the range of 70. It was like pretty close to 70. So I think like anywhere from 60 to 70 is a good metric to go for. And then stuff like war of light, is obviously just way too much. I think that that's like way too much for to ask for completionists in a single set, yeah. let alone like a single month or two months or any kind uh-huh. of, I guess war of light came out over a course of several months, but yeah, yeah, it was, it's a lot to ask for. Um, well, we have to remember war of light was basically two different boosters though, with odds and right. evens. So yeah. So it was kind yeah. of like, two it was sets. really half. Yeah. yeah it was two sets. Technically, but yeah, apparently, no, I I agree with that. Um, yeah, I will say one thing figures, though. As far as equipment, um, I guess for, I'll say for a full, I like even numbers. That's all I'm gonna say oh. about that. Ooh, ooh, I will say one thing really quickly about gravity feeds. Um, if your gravity feed is twenty characters and then half the characters are the same as the first ten, your gravity feed sucks. I hate it. Uh, that's Thor, that's Eternals, that's kind of Captain Marvel, that's kind of Black Widow. Yeah. Uh, doubling up on all these characters really, really sucks. I would rather you have a 15-character gravity feed like Civil War um, and not have any doubles of figures at all. You know, yeah, a very low... Just I, I can't like stand the two versions a thing. A rookie that sucks. Vet version? Yeah, I agree. Uh, next up, Cody says, with DC only having one set a year, do you think those sh- sets should have another year in modern rotation to help diversify the meta? Very interesting, uh, I will say, that you say to help diversify meta. As far as that goes, no. I don't think any set should ever stay, no matter what property it is, to help diversify meta. I think the meta will be diversified itself. Now, as far as you wanting to say, like, DC should be in there just because there's so much Marvel stuff. I don't think they should have another year in rotation um, because eventually, like, that won't get played. Like, let's just say another year in rotation. Batman the Animated Series could still be modern. Nothing from that except for the chases is going to be seeing play, and that's the same that it's been for the last three years of that set's life. Rebirth and C. So that doesn't help. And... That's like all Duke Rebirth is going to see. Guess, it's maybe. Oz and Duke Thomas. Yeah. Some people like, play that. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, it, it's... you know? So, as far as meta goes, there's nothing in, like, sets after a certain point, or no. there's one or two figures in sets after a certain point that will actually see play. I think, um, I think the whole. D, like, DC viable options. Yeah. Um, and silver's. I think with Silver, we don't have to do this anymore. And then. Sorry, really quick, just to finish my thought. I like what they did with keeping Rebirth the cutoff point, where normally it would have been after that. I think that's fine, where it's just doing their best to not say DC sets get an extra year in Modern, but saying we will stretch to get another DC set to keep it in Modern. I think that is fine, but I I don't think they should get an extra year. I don't think any set, I don't think WWE should get an extra year, even though it's going to be gone next year. I don't, which is sad to think about. Um, I don't think anything should get an extra year just because it's not Marvel, basically. So that's that's my thoughts on it. Sorry. I I, yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't think that the modern rotation is like, you know, that's not the thing that most people who play this game care about. Um, Now that's like the most of what people online will talk about 
is probably like modern rotation and like meta and stuff like that. But the vast majority of the people that play this game don't even bother like caring about what's modern. It's mostly tabletop, kitchen top. Uh, well, it's all tabletop. Oh wait, no, it's not because Roll Ooh. Twenty exists. Right. Um, yeah, but imagine yeah. playing Roll Twenty. Um, I, know, I don't think that Wizards yeah. needs to worry about that over other things that they can better and focus on. Speaking of kitchen top, Alex asked a question. He watched Chef the other day, and he's now very hungry. If you could click your favorite food, what powers would it have? To be clear, it would be an actual figure with a dial, not just a special object. So this is sentient food that we are we are making. Um, first of all, I want to say, yeah, we're making food. Incredible. Food, was food monsters. In, or no. This food was once edible. Now it's quite incredible. Now come here oh, and take a look at is... fighting creatures you can ah, cook fighting oh food on da, na, 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 na. something like that i don't think that's like the tune of the song um but okay <laughs> ah, but i also I don't try. know uh so my favorite like i'm gonna i'm gonna say my favorite like cheat food or unhealthy food is gonna be a, a culver's chocolate shake so this is like brain freeze incapacitate style powers is basically what what a chocolate shake would probably be i guess you know outwit your ability to run <laughs> negative something speed or something because you're full i don't know i think it's a lot of food could have that but th my favorite food i guess chocolate shake would probably have incapacitate so Man. simian um I want to say my favorite food's like Momo's, but that's just because like it's one of my favorite like foods uh, to go get. It's got to be yeah. buffalo wings. So, uh, powers that a buffalo wing would have. Let's say like a buffalo wing was a, and it would definitely have like yeah. battle fury. Yeah, it would have to have like it'd be like close combat because it's obviously got battle fury, um, but probably like poison. Not because oh, I like that poison. You, but that's like, a good call. Burns. Uh, yeah. So yeah, like some sort of like human torch kind of like aspect to like poison. Like that. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, charge maybe flurry, but that doesn't really make a ton of sense. And then maybe like a, a stop click where it's like you know dipped it in ranch and now it's got ooh you know it's become ooh. sentient and it's like cosmic powered now. Um, but yeah, before we Ranch move on, Calder, cosmic power. I like that. Have yeah. You, have you ever seen Chef? No, I have not. The no. movie Chef. No. Can you guess what Marvel, what MCU character is the main character and director of? I believe it's. Chef? Uh, I believe it's John Favreau. Happy Hogan, is it not? Yeah, it is. Okay. Doesn't he have like a really? I think I tried to watch a show on Netflix that he had, which was also just like him cooking with people, but it was really boring and really bad. So yeah, I, I guess when you're just like famous director dude you can just make like it's so it's such a weird film it's hard to even describe but there's like there's zero tension which mm. makes me really tense throughout the movie because throughout the entire oh. movie i'm like what's gonna go bad and then it's just like nothing really goes all that bad and it's just very oh. strange robert downey jr shows up at one point he's the one oh, that really? gives him like the food truck it's very like it's huh. a very fine okay movie but I will just say it is, in fact, just a movie. And that's all I can really say about okay. it. Okay. I can't yeah. say I care much about movies about food unless it's Ratatouille. And even yeah. then, that's you not really gonna see stand out. John Favreau me. go on like a, he gets like a, on a tangent slash meltdown about chocolate lava cake where he smashes it at one oh. point. So there is that. That's one of the best desserts at Red Lobster. So I don't know why he's so mad about it, but okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Mark asks, set 47 being kind of revealed here. Uh, top three must haves, top three no ways. Uh, personally, my top three must haves got to go to, of course, uh, a good, really good John Walker, uh, a really solid battle star. This is, of course, assuming we don't get any duo figures, which we probably won't. Uh, as far as like a third must have, eh, I'm pretty, I'm going to probably say close up magic, Jimmy Woo. Um, Simi, what are your top three must-haves? My top three must-haves. I really want the 
the from the Loki series, I want the old man Loki when he's fighting Eliath or whatever the smoke monster thing is, not really fighting it, but when he's just generating a giant city out of like illusion. I want like some not necessarily like a chase figure, but like something that's like that version of him. Mm-hmm. Uh that was like a really cool scene. Uh I have not watched What If yet, so um from Falcon Winter Soldier man, I'd really I'd like to get a Batrock the Leaper, a new like a newish one, one that's oh, yeah. not from what was the last one that we got? It would have been one um in Winter Soldier? As far as George St. Pierre, it would have been Winter Soldier. Um, as far as normal comic batch rock, it would have been Avengers Defenders War. Yeah, so it's been way too long. Uh, and then like a, also like a working on the boat, Sam would be a great figure. Oh, to gosh, get. stop, man! What a uh, great plot line. Uh, <laughs> so, um, like, and then, uh, no, that, so so batch rock, and then from uh, Wandavision. I'd really like to get um, like a Cat Dennings driving the truck thing. The oh whatever, sure, the donut truck or whatever it was. Yeah, it's not a donut truck. I don't know what it was though. Yeah, no, it was, it was like a food truck, a carnival. I'm gonna say for like my top three, I really don't want. Um, it's gonna be kind of the whole. We've seen like alligator Loki, croaky crocodile, locodile, whatever the hell you want to say it is. Um, I don't like that that exists. People can hate me as much as you want. That character was not that important to the story, so I don't want to waste set slots on characters that aren't important. So um, I don't want a wasted set slot on a figure like President Loki, as cool as that may be. Um, he would probably have some stupid Doug's Army ability that's not good or something, you know, and he doesn't do anything. I wanted him to do something cool, but he didn't do anything cool, so I don't want to waste a set slot on him. I don't want to waste a set slot on, like, Boastful Loki either, because, um, like, he also did basically nothing. Um, and I honestly don't want to waste cool, a set slot yeah. on Kang either. Like, as much as I like the one who knows... Or, okay, I really... No, I'm taking that back. I don't want to waste a set slot on Miss Minutes. If you give Miss Minutes a figure, I will boot curb stomp every Miss Minutes figure I pull. Make her a pog, that is fine. Do not waste a set slot on Miss Minutes. Oh, I will shoot. Oh, I'll be so mad. Please yeah. don't. I liked her. I liked that it was the it's... Applejack voice actress, and she was like, howdy, y'all. Like, that's she was cute. She was funny, sure. whatever. Don't give her a figure, though. Pog, yeah, fine. I, yeah. I don't know how you would really explain that in, in any kind of way that wasn't, like, a complete support kind of thing. Um, yeah, a bystander that, gen- like, you generate a bystander, and it has, you know, perplexed prob out something, with something, yeah. some sort of power set like that fine um yeah yeah uh, figures i don't want to see um man honestly yeah like because it's such a small set i can't really weed out too many that i don't want to see uh i don't want to see uh, too many that didn't have a ton of screen time and uh, because i haven't watched what if i don't know but i feel like party thor was like an episode or like less than that as far as screen time goes and i feel like it would be way more prominent to uh use like the series that had like full character development throughout them like wandavision falcon winter soldier and loki um i really don't want that being said i really don't want multiple versions i don't want like three lokis uh and that being like I don't even know what to call like our Loki is what I'll call him because I like the main, the one that we follow through the series. I don't want three versions of just him. Uh, I feel like we're already yeah. going to get at least two. I don't want three versions of Sam. Um, Sam is pretty much a static character. I feel throughout. like we're going to get three at least though. Yeah. And that's like my, a really that's good my Captain because... America and okay. Captain America. And then like a Falcon. Like what, I just don't want to get four and get Sam throughout the Falcon Winter Soldier series, like a shield. It's it. Well, sure, but like but you know, money for he a does boat. train with the shield, and like that's like does. that is the true. big physical like change. Uh, I'm just thinking like as far as like character development, because um, even after meeting like Isaiah Bradley, he doesn't really change that much. Like his opinion. Really? And, like, and he kind of goes know. back to be like, see, look what you kind of said was wrong. Or like, like later on, you know, well, yeah, show, it's like, weird. It's like, 
Oh, so you're saying the red, white, and blue kind of like abused the heck out of you. And that's terrible. Like, this is not a good <laughs> Sam Wilson impression. This is like my oh, bad. Oh, no, it's not. We're just, we're just going to This is my bad, bad New York impression for some reason. Uh, yeah, there we go. But it's like, so the red, white, and blue abused you, Isaiah. And you don't like them because of that. Because, you know, they tortured you and this and that. But what if I showed up in a suit that was red, white, and blue? Because I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel yeah. like Sam's like... Uh, yeah. I don't know, like kind of cavalier attitude toward uh, towards Isaiah's I'm, story is like uh, one of the worst we'll points say, in like the the whole thing for me. Yeah, yeah, I'll agree with that. I will say one thing: I'd rather have multiple versions of Sam than multiple versions of Bucky. That's uh, true because because Bucky, Bucky does and does not change. Yeah, doesn't do much. Yeah, like is there an emotional sure coming to like, terms with being the Winter Soldier? But as far as like how does that translate to hero clicks, like? Depressed Bucky to slightly not as depressed Bucky doesn't change how he punches someone, I don't think. No. So, as far like, as yeah, we don't need multiple would... Buckies. Um, yeah. Now, that being said, I think we could definitely use two battle stars, you know, like heavy object battle star, and then. Normal. That's mean. That's so mean. <laughs> so mean. No respect for Battlestar. Uh, Battlestar is my my man, dude. When I saw him, and I was like, "Wow, we are we're not only getting John Walker, we're getting freaking Battlestar." I was so impressed with the MCU. I was like, "What a, a cut. stop click that gives a opposing You're character terrible. TK. You're a bad person. You're a bad man." To to move him next to blocking and then KO so him instantly. Mean. That is so mean. Uh, knockback. <laughs> knockback does Battlestar damage. Battlestar is the only one that can take knockback damage. Actually, yeah, uh, all right, that's mean. Him. Um, all right. Uh, Chance says, if you guys had to guess in a year, what is your win loss ratio? I like to keep my win loss ratio pretty close. Apparently, um, if you look at my WizKids info network, they I'm maybe ten wins above my losses at any given point in time. Uh, one time it was like one win above my losses, so I'm probably like fifty five wins, forty five losses for the year, maybe sixty forty. Honestly, it's real it's real close. That's I mean, that's just that's the way it is. I lose a lot. I, I win about the same amount. It's if I were a fighter, like a boxer, they would be like, this guy is absolutely garbage. The the losses to wins, <laughs> yeah, they would be like, no, he never bet no on this person ever. Uh what about you, Simeon? Um according to the win system, which I don't know how accurate it is just because I you know I don't know how accurate it is. Um, I have so because Devin entered it as a tie one time. I oh, do yes. have one tie, uh, but I have three hundred and forty nine wins to two hundred and sixteen losses according to my win system. Now I would like to think that I've lost way more than that, but that gives me a slightly better than. I don't know, like a slightly better than one and a half uh, chance of like winning most games. I don't, not one and a half chance. I don't know, a one point five win to loss ratio. I guess slightly better than that. It'd be closer to like one point six. I don't want to do yeah. math, but yeah, um, which is way better than any other game <laughs> win to loss ratio when it's like a human aspect added in. So sure. yeah, that I mean, I can't believe it's that like big of a skew because man half of those 216 losses had to have come from like the first year and a half that i played or first two years that i played oh sure like i did not win for a very long time i don't know when all of a sudden i just became this like unstoppable oh yes of course to whatever yeah you unstoppable beast simian verse okay i forget (laughs) okay i forget um you know what bothered me the most about the venue i used to go to and i obviously i don't play super weekly or very consistently like a lot of people do but the venue i used to go to in rapid city they never put anything in the win system and it really bothered me and i was like man i i show up here maybe once every three months play three games uh but honestly probably thanks to them is why i don't have more losses than wins uh because yeah. that's where i was playing you know mostly at the beginning um i i played at a venue where yeah. They were so into the win system that they would like lie and schedule events on like holidays and stuff to get special badges or oh my trophies gosh. or whatever. Oh and they'd be my like, Do you want to be signed up for like the for the July Fourth one? Because like blah blah blah, like this. Oh, and yeah. I was like, no achievement. Thing. I do not care that much. But yeah, they were like it's super weird. Into it. 
compare to that achievement hunter like type deal? Like, yo, like during like Justice League or something, where they like, yo, did you pull an ID card? Are you gonna use the code? Can I put, can I put the code <laughs> in and I win? I've Let still never entered a single code. Uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, Bill asks, how much does the difference of playing a full sideline of stuff like Trouble Alerts, Trouble Makers, etc., or Sentinels give you over a player without any? Um, I think you have just a clear advantage. I mean, it's free, yeah. right? Trouble Alerts and Trouble Makers. I have, I don't want to say I have won games, but I have had games where the flow of the game has changed by me bringing in either a Lex Luthor, because I, I now have uh, a Precision Strike, 11 for 3 attacker, or a, you know, of course, the biggest one being Black Vulcan, a yeah. penetrating damage figure to take out a Colossal figure Pen or something poison, like that, right? Pen, energy Pen Poison. And then yeah. he's hard to put down in his own right with super senses and then later super senses that he can prob, whatever, you know? So I, I think you have a clear advantage. I don't think it's the world's biggest advantage, but I would say I'd say if you go a one on one with another wrestler, you got a fifty fifty chance of winning. Right? Now I'm not I'm a genetic freak, all right? I got money, so I got a full sideline of trouble alerts and troublemakers. So that takes you a fifty fifty chance. I've got a sixty six Chances of winning. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's okay. I'm gonna stop there, but that's what I think, Bill. Now his own Bill knows he can't beat me. <laughs> so you take his fifty chance percent chance of winning, and my sixty six and two thirds chance percent chance of winning. I got a hundred twenty three and three thirds percent chance of winning. I don't remember how it goes. It's a triple threat bet. No, okay, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Luke, now that all the chases for Empire have been previewed, please rank in order of what you expect for. Personal favorites, playability, cost, slash resale value. Uh, personal favorite for me, it's still going to have to be uh, Thanos and Ricky Barnes, just because they're Captain America adjacent yeah. characters. Playability-wise, I think... Uh, Demon in Armor is the most playable, or uh, well, really, I think Venom Magneto is the Venom most playable. Venom Magneto, and then Venom Magneto. Demon, yeah, those seem like then, because uh, they're the cheapest. Like they both happen yes. to be the cheapest. Yes, and get the vote for most playable. I think resale value. I think that Thor is going to be the most expensive chase. I definitely think that Thor, or that Century, because we haven't seen Century in a long time. But I think yeah. easily that Thor. I, I really. Skull, yeah. Powerhouse, not good, but I think resale value, he's going to have the highest. Yeah, I will say for my personal favorites, that's not my favorite version of the Sentry. Uh, that is one of my favorite versions of the Hulk. Um, not yeah, one of my favorite yeah. versions of Thor, but it is a really cool version. So I think my personal favorites are the uh, Horseman of Apocalypse Hulk and and Venom X-23. And that's from someone that really doesn't care about the Venoms. And even like that X-23 sculpt isn't great. I just think it's it's neat. Like we have not seen. Because I've played, what is it? Uh, not Web of Shadows. Of Which Shadows. one's the one with all the Venom stuff? I have no idea what you're talking about. There's, there's a, there's a Spider-Man mean? game. I think it, I don't know. Is it Web of Shadows? Info? I don't know. Uh, but there's a Spider-Man game where like Wolverine does get imbued with like the symbiote, and that was like one of my oh. favorite. Like no idea because it had never happened before in that kind of way. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. I think Venom Magneto is probably my vote for most playable. I think Demon and Armor could fit with like a mystical team, but I just don't know if it actually will. If anyone will bother. Um, Venom Magneto being the cheapest. We've seen a TK piece that can double TK for one action. That's pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Has good keywords. Uh, any of the figures that have the X-Men, like any of the swap figures, the like X-Men, Fantastic Four, anything that could be potentially sidelined for that specific reason is probably an optional playable thing and yeah. then cost resale value yeah I, I think that thor just because of the sculpt being so awesome and it being one of like the best casual looking pieces out of all of these i think that thor is going to go for the most uh venom magneto probably being like that's the one that i've seen the most people like talking about and kind of play testing with so far and so venom magneto will probably be like right up there as well sure 
Ben Jones says when teaching people to play and you get past the whole basic whatever, what strategies do you uh, have to discuss? All right. Is it about how to build a team? Do you encourage playing just the best pieces or is it pick a character that you like and build around it? Do you discuss having TK prob leadership, etc., on a team? I guess what things do you suggest when helping people with uh, new ideas about building a team? So when you're teaching someone to play, I'm going to be real with you, Ben, uh, as far as teaching people to play, uh, I have never, past the first one or two games we play, I have never kept teaching someone. They normally don't care anymore <laughs> or go sure. off on their own and stop caring. I, I, I would out. like to say that people that I've taught to play eventually play the game. That has not been the case for people that I have taught. They've just they've never you know picked it up or whatever. I would probably just say just build just around figures you like. easy it'll be when you're like, hey, you can get that seventy dollars starter. I knew you were gonna say and that. And let's say Gosh. I don't know, uh, almost eighty dollars worth of boosters being half a brick over there, and then come back over and I'll show you how to build with those figures. And for that <laughs> low price of one hundred and fifty-five ish dollars, they'll have what thirty-five figures and like two maps, two double-sided maps. So they'll have everything in the world they could ever want. Um, Gosh, True. That's so much money. Anyways, over the whole money thing. Um, yeah, like what I enjoyed, what made me want to keep playing the game was just that I could put an entire team of Steve Rogers. That was it. So just playing characters you like. I think that's the biggest thing that keeps people wanting to come back. Because when you surprisingly do kind of well with a team, I think it's just all about, you know, for me, I'm, a, I'm playing this game because Captain America was in it. Cap wasn't in it, I wouldn't play this game. Like, that's it, period. You know, it could have every Marvel character in the universe, but if Steve Rogers isn't in this game, I'm not playing this game. So that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me wanting to play this game. And that's what I should say for a new player getting in. Hey, build around Wolverine, build around Iron Man, build around yeah. Batman, whatever. I think that's, yeah. Getting, Once like, we start getting into strategy, idea. then it's like, hey, I would probably stress prob the most. Because I think that's the one sure. thing every new player dislikes is the whole missing. Yeah, missing but I would attacks. probably say that would be it. Sorry, Simeon, go I, ahead. No, I, I think, you know, making sure they know that they should have, because anytime I've played a game and I realize I have a severe lack of X power, it becomes very apparent when I'm like, ah, it would be really beneficial if I had an outwit to go against my opponent's, like, two outwits. And I have no outwit. My like, once you like get into like a face-off situation where your opponent is outgunning you in one of like the support power kind of like areas, it becomes very apparent. And I think it's like an easy lesson to be learned. So I don't think it really needs to be told to anybody. But yeah, when it comes to helping somebody team build, I usually focus on more of like the thematic kind of aspects and like how to search keywords, how to like find you know the right kind of like points and leaderships and like whatever that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then once they have their like generic kind of idea of like, you know, I want to play Avengers. I want to play X-Men. I want to play, you know, Rick Remender's X-Force specifically that kind of like, you know, whatever team they're looking for. Once they get like those kind of ideas, then giving them the, like the knowledge of like, all right. So like last week you got beat by like a swarm team. So, Maybe we try some, like, energy explosion. We try, you know, some, I don't know, some lockdown kind of stuff. You know, whatever, a barrier, whatever, that kind of thing. You uh, you yeah. give them, like the, like, the tools slowly. I think people mostly can pick up on what their teams, their fun teams are lacking and adjust. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Awesome. And that is going to be all <clears throat> that is going to be all of our questions that are on the Discord. So, moving on to people that sent us messages on Facebook, we have Crow Tally. He wants to hear uh, what our dream chase set would be. I honestly can't remember if we answered this question or not. So, we're going to go ahead and answer it again. My my dream chase set, like I said, I would die a very happy man if the chase set for What If slash um, the Marvel Studios Disney Plus set was duo figures. I like duo figures. I like them as mechanics. Um, and I like them as sculpts. They look really cool as sculpts, you know? Like, 
except for a few of the wacky ones that look like absolute garbage, like Kirk and Uhura and like Superman and Superman. Besides those ones, duo figures all look really, really dope. Uh, like even even the worst, probably maybe the worst one is like Hal Jordan and Sinestro. They look really stupid. Um, but I still really like duo figures. The Captain America and Bucky, uh, I, would, I think it's abhorrently screwed up that we don't have a Captain America and Falcon. Probably my favorite dynamic duo in comics of all time. Um, so yeah, I think duo figures would be my dream chase uh, trace set for sure. Yeah, fair enough. Um, for me, it comes down to having like the interesting bases and stuff. I really like that clear... Uh, mm that clear like colored look that the Phoenix five have as far as like a storyline to pull from, because man, like we've already gotten figures from all the storylines that I really care about and Marvel and DC, I guess if you know, it'd be easier for me to pick a DC chase set and I would do, I do like the Sandman storyline. So like dream death, like those kind of things. <clears throat> These like the dream, abstract... dream, 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 dream. I know what you mean. What you yeah, mean. <laughs> Morpheus. Uh, red pill or blue pill, Calder. That is what Morpheus does not ask because uh, it's a different Morpheus. But anyhow, yep. uh, that would probably be by if I could pick, it'd be you know the Vertigo line of DC's stuff, and it'd be something like that. I don't know how it would translate to clicks. It probably wouldn't very well. But as far as getting tiny little statuettes of those all those characters that'd be really cool uh next up uh crow also asks if you could discuss your favorite halloween uh 400 point teams your nightmare team if you would so my like good halloween team i guess good in quotation marks here uh has to go to the um What's it called? I really like the zombie team base. I am one of those scumbags that just cannot get enough of playing the zombie team base. I love Marvel zombies. Love playing the Marvel, you know, zombie team base. I think it's awesome. However, if I want to play a bad team, I can just as easily play uh, the actual Marvel zombies if we're playing Golden Age. And they are terrible. They are the absolute worst. They're real bad um, because they were made before cards, and the ones that were made after cards are overcosted and terrible. So I do also like to play those Marvel Zombies, and then from time to time, I have a ton of skeletons, and I do love playing me a skeleton horde uh, team from whatever Undead. Yeah. So the Simeon undead Halloween. The Undead team. set is such an easy set to like throw some fun stuff together with. Um, that being said, one of my favorite. So anytime it's like a Halloween kind of theme, I always like to go for uh, like monster theme teams because I'm not not big into like mystical or whatever but monster is like a fun enough keyword uh one of my favorite of all time monsters is hell cow and i once played a team that was four hell cows and then barbados from rebirth uh at 200 points so barbados has a fun thing where anyone with any friendly character with the monster keyword can use the batman enemy team ability which means they can copy any attack value from somebody with that team ability um, Hell Cows have a 9 attack that goes down to an 8 attack. They start with a 9 with sidestep. Uh, next to Barbados, however, they get a they get a copy of that sweet 12 attack. So uh, that was like one of my favorite teams. There's not a ton of stuff that a Hell Cow can punch through, but luckily Barbados is no slouch. You've got a 12 attack with Pensai for 4. So it's like a f- fun enough team that it's, you know, it can win some games, but uh, it can also get like crit hit on two flurries from the rebirth Superman uh, mm-hmm. and take like enough damage to just die in one turn. So that's the other option. Uh, but yeah, it's easy enough to swap out like a hell cow for, I like my herd of hell cows, but it's easy enough to swap one out for some like moloids or any other kind of monster stuff to help boost hell cows damage, um, help, really like crank out like the steel energy stuff uh i've only ever once gotten a hell cow to top dial and it was against a jsa team so it was you know Mm. red tornado and uh whatever dr hootie dr owl oh sure i don't know the person that pops out the uh, owl it was against like that that whole jsa squad 
and I actually managed to get Hellcow to top dial. Hellcow at top dial is good, so bad. but not like impossible. Although I will say Hellcow at top dial now is just slightly better because you get that 12 attack with 5 damage exploit that works with hypersonic. So it somehow is nice. got better. Just keeps getting better. Hell, that Hellcow upgrade. I love that. Um, all right. Then we have questions from old Malcolm Russia. These are all Halloween cat questions. So, guys, uh, these aren't expressly super hero clicks related. So, if you do want to bow out uh, right now, you can, of course, find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, technically all those places at Dial H for Hero Clicks. You can send us an email at Dial H4. It's the number four, or sorry, F O R E, all spelled out actually on the email at gmail.com. You want to send us questions and stuff. Um, yeah, go ahead. If you want to support the show for as little as a dollar a month, you can go do so on Patreon.com. Bunch of really cool stuff on Patreon that we do, of course, including our Discord server and hanging out with us and everything. We really appreciate everybody's support. As always, it's also awesome if you guys go ahead and leave us a review on any you know, podcast, iTunes, whatever, Spotify. Uh, reviews really help us. And, of course, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We do a lot of cool stuff on the YouTube channel uh, this month is marks the year anniversary of extreme rules and we want to do more in-person videos like that because those are really really fun for us to make um so if you haven't seen any of those yet definitely go check those out on youtube and check out like the skit videos and the team building videos and the unboxings all that fun stuff the uh, painting videos Simeon has up there are really awesome you know finding dials for like D figures and stuff so check out the youtube channel it all that really helps us. So thank you guys so much. Anyways, Malcolm's questions here. Like I said, not expressly hero cooks related. Uh, Simeon, what is your favorite or least favorite Halloween candy? Favorite would be the pumpkin shaped Reese's peanut butter cups. I think yeah. they're best when they're in a non cup shape. Pop shape. Or whatever. They have more reason. peanut butter. They have more peanut butter. That's why. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And then least favorite's pretty easy. Uh, I know it's like, a, you know, do you like it or don't you kind of thing? Uh, Laurel, your Yanny, whatever. Uh, it's But yeah, it's candy corn. I think candy corn is disgusting. Corn. I, I can eat like two pieces of candy corn before I'm reminded. And the worst part about candy corn is because it's like this weird corn starchy consistency and it's this like even weirder flavor. Really? It just reminds me how some candy is like the most inedible gunk that you can possibly eat like a gummy bear is just like this weird gelatin sugar lump any kind of gummy you know what i love about gummy bears is that they're a beef product they're made from the uh (laughs) they're part of a cow's hoof bone Bone. yeah yeah basically yeah yeah jello used to be made out of uh yeah some I can't remember what part of marrow. So they're they're not things. like vegetarian technically, even though they, they look like they are. But like, who cares? Why well, are they not vegan? I guess. But like, honestly, who cares? I just love that. I love walking up to my vegan aunt and being like, "Do you want a gummy bear?" <laughs> yeah, she doesn't know. How could she know? Yes. Anyways, you've eaten <laughs> an animal. Oh. Like one of my animal crackers, also an animal. No. <laughs> that's, that's uh, no, I I basically agree with you, Simeon. <laughs> I think. Pumpkins are the best Halloween candy. However, I will say I hate circus peanuts more so than Is that Halloween candy. Though candy corn, I've had them given to me as oh, Halloween man. candy. I've had a house given to me. I haven't had um, so circus peanuts are one of those things where occasionally I'll be in an area and I'll smell something that's like familiar, and I'm like, "What is that smell?" I can't place it, but it's like it's something I know. And I'll sit there for a while and I'm like, "That's a circus peanut." How do I, why, why am I smelling a circus peanut? And then I realized that like the carbon dioxide detectors going off and everyone in the vicinity is being poisoned because that's what circus uh, yes. peanuts are. Yeah. Uh, Simeon, what is your favorite and least favorite Halloween costume you've ever worn? Oh man. Uh, least favorite, man. I don't have a least favorite. I love Halloween and I love dressing up. So there's, yeah, truly cannot pick out a least favorite. Um, one year, so this was like one of my in between years where I was not like hadn't quite hit puberty, but had like awkward finished, yeah. So had finished growing, but hadn't quite hit puberty. So like around like middle school. But what I'm trying to say is like there was like a leap year of where I just did not change physically. And so mm. I was able to use like the last three or four years of costumes and combine them into like white Power Ranger turtle 
clown gorilla and so I was, I was i called myself the the discount bin or something like that but that's funny that's but funny. yeah it was literally just like the last four years of costumes that i had used and it was yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm gonna say least favorite costume has to go to I'm going to give it to when I was the Riddler. So there was a time where I just thought the coolest thing in the world was that you could get markers that you could use to put on clothes, like fabric markers, basically. I thought that was so awesome. That was like all the arts and crafts I did whenever we would do them in my house. And I was like, holy smokes, this is awesome. I could be the Riddler. I and I took a white... A ton of question marks on this. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. <laughs> I just drew a ton of question marks. But I made the bad mistake of being like, well, it's a white shirt. The Riddler has a, has, is green. So I instead of buying a green shirt and then putting black question marks on it, I had a white shirt that I colored the most of the front green with these weird oh, marker no. like scribble lines <laughs> with then black question marks oh, around it. Somehow worse um, than what I imagined. Very bad. It was a very <laughs> bad costume and people were like, what are you? And I spray painted a like a pseudo cane thing, like a shepherd's crook. Like it was just basically like a bottom of an umbrella handle type because it had made that like U shape spray painted that green. That that was my co- this is I was probably like twelve or something. I was like, I'm the Riddler. I think I had just seen whatever Jim Carrey Riddler oh. was that movie like a month or two before or something, you know. And I was like, I'm gonna be the Riddler. Um, favorite not, though, not as bad. You could have seen like Heath Ledger and been like, I'm gonna be the Joker for the next five years. <sighs> yeah, no, thankfully, no. Joker was never a fan favorite villain of mine, but I was like, man, the Riddler. I think also because I played Lego Batman at the time. And like the Riddler had one of the coolest levels in Lego Batman. I was like, yeah, the Riddler, the Riddler's cool. Um, I'll say it, and I, you know, I I know a lot of people won't agree. Hot the Riddler take. is a better villain than the Joker, just straight up. Okay, yeah. Trying to outsmart like an, an anger all the gamers the out there, all the all the yeah. repressed uh, gamers in society. Rise up, yeah, he's disturbed. Uh, as as you can see from his tattoo on his forehead that says disturbed. Uh, no. <laughs> Trying to outsmart somebody whose whole thing is being like the world's greatest detective, yada yada, that like kind of thing. Like beating him, beating Batman at his own game. At least comics wise, I've always had way more respect for the Riddler than the Joker because the the Joker has it easy. He's like, oh, I'll do something wacky right. with bombs wacky. and guns versus like, it's like the great. Riddler. That's amazing. You you thought of the simplest thing possible, which is like violence. And here we have like the Riddler who's, you know, also doing violent things. But it's like, you know, I have to think that the Saw movie franchise was started in part by the Riddler, you know, at least oh, sure. like slightly inspired. Yeah. That's the end of um, my hot take, though. Beautiful. Thank you, Simeon. Uh, my favorite costume probably has to go to the multiple times I was like Ash throughout Halloween. And my mother being very judgmental that her 14, 15, no, uh, Williams, of course, uh, Ash Williams. Um, and like my family being very judgmental about the fact that I am this character from a movie they've never seen, um, who is a seemingly really violent, terrible, like character when I'm 14, 15 years old, dressing up as, uh, as Ash Williams. Um, I enjoyed it though. I, I always liked being Ash. Priest, because, Fights demons. I mean, they, yeah, fights demons, chosen one. Yeah. Um, I saw Evil Dead 2 this last weekend, and the person I was watching with, they just go, he really has a strong will to live. I think I would have given up by now, which is true. Like, that's yeah. like the cool thing about Ash, is he does have that will to live, to power through, and yeah. he, he's like the only he's person in Evil Dead that can, get to work you know, at a chain store. I get to S Mart. Got to, yeah. you know, those housewares aren't going to stack them shel- themselves on the shelf, you know. Yeah, um, as a former retail worker, I have to say, having a will to live after, or having a will <laughs> to live and your end game being working at S Smart or wherever, uh, man. It's pretty crazy when you think he goes back to that job. After everything that happens, yes. he goes back to that job and stays there. For the next 30 years, when when we see him in, you know, Ash versus Evil, or 25 years, whatever, but, like, he he goes to the cabin, survives, goes back in time, 
survives, and if we go off good ending, which is technically canon now because of evil or Ashford's Evil Dead, he he then works retail for the next thirty years of his life, and that's what he does. So you kind yeah. Anyways, crazy strong will to live, Ash Williams. Um, number three, what was your favorite Halloween costume you ever saw someone else wear? Ooh, uh, man. I could name like several cosplays that I thought were really solid favorite Halloween costume. I saw someone else wear. um, I had a friend like a long time ago that did a really solid. So like when arrow first came out the CW series and it was like episode or season one did a really solid uh, Island Ollie arrow cosplay. Oh, sure. Um, And then I, I dressed my nephew and he was still like, baby sized and I could still carry him around easily. I dressed him up in a Wolverine like outfit. Mm. So that was not his choice, but that was one of my favorites anyhow. Nice. It's not like he could complain. He was a baby. I think my favorite uh and this is like tough, but I every time I think of like a really funny couples costume, I have to give it to the one online where it's like the the girlfriend or wife or whatever, she is a lamp. And then the husband or boyfriend or whatever is is a moth. Oh, I, yeah, I find yeah. that infinitely funny. That I'm sure people have probably seen that picture, um, but I, I do find that infinitely funny. I, I do I do really like that costume. Uh, next up, what was your favorite? Uh, sorry, what Halloween costume are you gonna wear this year or next year? This oh no, it's you, Simeon. So, what Halloween costume are you gonna plan on wearing this year or next year? This year, I still don't quite know. Um... So, um, yeah, I, I'll have to, this being October 25th, I'll really have to throw something together. Luckily, yeah, I have less than a week plenty away. of stuff. Like, you've seen the Thursday throwdown thumbnails. I have mm. plenty of stuff to throw together uh, next year. So I am I'm wanting to do a few cosplays slash costumes before I cut my hair. And one of them is a Morton Joe from uh, oh, yeah. Fury Road. I really want to get that like finished. I think it'll be easy enough. Um, it's just a lot of like little detail work stuff that I'd have to figure out, and I'd have to get started on it somewhat soon. And then I can't remember the other one. Oh, I really want to do uh, Kaiman from uh, Doro Hidoro, but mm. that is like a whenever kind of thing because that would be like a full mask kind of situation where you wouldn't see my head at all. So I do not have to look like any particular thing. Right. And, probably would want to like trim my beard down quite a bit for that one just because gas masks work better when you don't have hair in your mouth um first my costume would go uh i have to make some form of like couples costume this year so i'm trying to figure out what to be my my first idea was shot down because we we didn't understand how we would make it my idea was that she would be a cutie pie and i would be a stud muffin because i oh, think that word play is hilarious would be like um she would be a cutie pie and you would be a pootie pie <laughs> uh, no famous youtuber no. wow so i've heard that's terrible cutie pie that is awful oh. um i think we might have settled on me being ash and then she's gonna try to put together an annie Noby from evil dead 2 um <laughs> quite the deep cut uh as far as like halloween goes side characters from a horror movie um but i think that's what it's gonna end up being unless i can think of something else that she really does not care about halloween at all um so it's pr- basically all on me to try to figure out a costume thing that would work. Uh, obviously, my dream would be Diamondback and Captain America, but that's not going to happen. So it's, yeah, don't know we'll it's, figure out. Probably going to be... I don't know if uh, the audience can hear that audibly, but it sounds like the Chinese anthem? Oh, no, no. It's just a big red flag. I mean, I, okay, never mind. Oh, chill out. <laughs> chill out, Simeon. Calm down. Uh, it's okay. Not to everybody. It's like the best so, holiday. I so here's the thing, not right? I, just like, just not, not the best holiday. It's not the best holiday. Favorite. It's not the best holiday. Uh, it's not to be everybody's favorite. To be fair, I dislike her favorite holiday, which is Thanksgiving. I don't see the point of Thanksgiving. As a rancher who has a crop, who has a harvest, who has a whatever, I still, I, Thanksgiving feels like an excuse for a meal, and I still don't like thanksgiving so i think we have a give and take there honestly anyways that's what it's going to be that was a lot of personal information 
Uh, what Halloween? What is your favorite Halloween theme slash monster? Damien. Favorite Halloween theme slash monster. Um, so as far as themes go, I'm going to take this as like horror theme slash monster because I I don't prefer like slasher kind of stuff. I prefer like the the real cerebral kind of um, stuff. Uh, if, if if you were going to theme it, like you were going to make a room, um, I guess like ghost stuff. I don't know. I don't really care for ghosts. I don't. So I don't believe in ghosts whatsoever. I know like some people do. So I'm not going to pretend like that's not a thing that could be a thought that someone has. Uh, some people believe in like spiritual stuff and like ghosts. And I just, for one, have never experienced anything like that. And for two, I just think, you know, check your carbon monoxide detectors. I've mentioned it multiple times in this episode. Uh, not only could it be a circus peanut, it could also be a ghost. Um, open a window if you see a ghost. That's the best thing okay. I've ever heard. Uh, Halloween theme. So I'm not big into, like, the blood and, like, whatever. I like the big, dusty, gothic, like, castle mansion kind of stuff. Mm, okay. I don't need, like, blood splatter and, like, cobwebs and stuff, but, um, like, a nice a nice manor that's well-kept, but is, like, old and creaky and spooky. Maybe, because... maybe has some of those, like, white sheets on some of the furniture, maybe. Sure, yeah. It's old. But, like, yeah, I... The, the like random blood splatter and uh, fake cobwebs and spiders and stuff like I'm not afraid of bugs. I've never been I've never heard of like a you know man killed by huge horde of spiders. Like I get there's some poisonous spiders out there and snakes and whatever. But like, I don't know. That's not that's not horror to me. I think my favorite theme. I like skeletons in any way, shape or form. Uh, like Army Darkness is my favorite like all time movie pretty much. And that is like an army of skeletons. They fight. I like skeletons. I think the only time I don't like skeletons is when they're stupid. When people do like animal skeletons or like the spider skeleton where it's like, that's not a skeleton. <laughs> they don't have a skeleton. They have an ex. They, yeah. That's not how like it works. The animal has ears that are bone. Right. Like that's, yeah. that's not, that's not how that animals like looks where they actually just try to make the animal look like how the animal looks but it's not the actual skeleton. You know what I mean? Like how a bear's skull looks nothing like a bear with fur and meat and flesh on it. But it's like, that's how it looks. I'm like, no, let's stop. But like, yeah, like the big Home Depot, like 10 foot tall skeleton, like that's cool. Uh, I like, yeah, just like skeletons. People do some goofy stuff with like skeletons and stuff. So I, I like skeletons as decorations and everything. Uh, the Halloween theme slash monster you picked above. What is your favorite, least favorite uh, Halloween? Uh, so let's just say uh, favorite monster in those movies for theme or favorite theme of those movies shall we say or tv show slash book oh man um <laughs> i did uh geez i don't know i'll go as far as book i'll go odd thomas who's a dean <laughs> coons book um was made into a movie although i would suggest reading the book because i don't know if the movie's quite justice but that's how that always goes so don't feel like sure. that even needs to be said, honestly. Um, I don't know. There's not like, so again, like books and TV shows don't really like scare me. Uh, there's not really like, that's why I watch like more like horror themed kind of stuff is for that kind of thing. I will say uh, movies that touch on not necessarily a supernatural element, but like an eldritch horror, like a some sort of like entity that is beyond explanation kind of thing. I always find those really cool. Uh, the Babadook is like a fun one, even though the, like the explanation, it's kind of a silly movie at the same time while being kind of like a scary one. Um, and there's several movies that follow like a similar kind of vein of that. Um, man, I don't know. Yeah. I'll just, I'll say that favorite movies okay. would be the Baba Duke because I can't think of a better one and then okay. it would be Odd Thomas. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just said it. Uh, my favorite movie is Army of Darkness as far as uh, skeletons and, and such go. I can't say I've read many scary books of that nature. I don't think that crosses my desk that much. So, yeah. Number seven, what Halloween theme slash monster do you refuse to watch or read as far as refuse to watch it's easier for, for me to refuse to watch because uh 
I pretty much won't refuse to read anything. I have not found an author out there that can like really get under my skin, but refuse to watch. I don't like things that are realistic. And so like when I say I don't like slashers, uh, the campy, like Jason, Freddy, like that kind of stuff, I don't mind because it's just kind of like silly, but there's like genuine, like, oh, this is just a realistic scenario that could actually happen to like people in a real like and it has happened you know to people like that kind of movie i do not care for i don't like being reminded that the world is like a terrible realistic scary place uh i like my fantasy kind of like horror stuff you know like weird alien stuff or weird ghost stuff or like whatever i'm fine with watching that uh it's when it gets like a little too close to reality that i'm kind of wigged out by it Still won't refuse to watch, but just it's more uncomfortable out of the rest. Okay. Gotcha. I, and this is, this this monster is one that genuinely terrifies me, so I can't watch it, because it, it will keep me up at night. It will freak me out, and that is uh, Dolls and Dummies. Um, I can't do it. Uh, I really can't. Uh, I had nightmares as a child from just looking at the cover of a Chucky DVD movie, and it freaked me the heck out. Um, I'll, Simeon said there's no author that gets under his skin. However, there is one author that gives me goosebumps. Ah, hey. ah, uh, uh, but I'm ah, uh, ah, uh, come on. All right, so dummy. So I can't. Yeah, I cannot read that book. That's I actually, I, honestly, out of all of. Arl Stein's, well, out of his Goosebumps series, because uh, yeah. he did like Fear Street and stuff. Out of the Goosebumps series, Night of the Living Dummy is probably the most horrifying one he did. That's like the I one where it's it. like, is this okay for like kids and young adults? It's because, terrifying. Yeah, it even like so, the Goosebumps episode uh, they did on it. Yeah, so the episode they did, real, is that when they try to like kill weird. it with like the steamroller or whatever, I think? That, like, I, I think don't that's remember how the that, I, I don't I remember I don't. they've got like a cousin that comes to visit or something yes. and at the end of the episode the cousin's like all right going back home good thing we defeated that dummy and they're like all right have fun on vacation and the cousin's head just like swivels backwards and it's like you too ha 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 and then turns back ooh, around or something ooh. I don't know I uh, hate they, that yeah I don't was, like that it was like not really a jump scare but just like a I mean, that's like Creepy. a fairly common horror trope where it's like you thought uh, you defeated the thing, but you didn't. Yeah. The other common trope with like dolls and dummies in movies is like the eyes opening. Yeah. You no, know? like that is like that's a common trope for a lot of things, but that's really common for these. So like I, I will never in a million years like watch any version of Chucky, any version of Annabelle, any anything with About dolls and dummies. Silence. I can't honestly. Um. I was watching, I don't know if I said this on podcast before or not, but like Doctor Who the other day, and I forgot about this episode, and it was when he's trapped in the hotel, and he opens, and it's just all those dummies, they turn and look at him, I was like, Ooh. that, that was like the <laughs> scariest yeah. thing I'd seen in my entire life, like that is my nightmare, to be locked in, in some kind of room like that, that I, I could not do, I cannot do dolls and dummies, they freak me the heck out, I will not be reading or watching any of those, um, the Halloween theme monster you named above. Uh, he says best worst favorite in hero clicks. Let's just do our favorite one in hero clicks here. Uh, Simeon. Yeah. So I didn't really, I didn't really name one. I guess, but like I'll stick with like some sort of ghost kind of thing. So I would You'd say, say a map. You like the gothic look? What what map is uh, maybe that fits it? Who knows? If you think of something else, go uh, for it. I don't it. really right. think there is a great map. There's like some map like the speakeasy, um, that kind of like look where it's like a really dusty, not really dusty, uh, dimly lit kind of like a bar scene. Um, but as far as like, uh, some sort of like spectral, whatever that you can't explain kind of thing, I would either go with death, which is like the, the clear one or grim reaper, whichever one's the clear one. Uh, I think it's death. He's the named one, the unique, that one's a really fun piece, uh, has blades, giant reach. When an opposing character takes damage from a friendly character with the monster keyword, you deal them one unavoidable damage, and if they aren't KO'd, then you heal them one. Uh, this is really fun when you have a way to keep opposing characters from healing. So if they're like next to somebody that prevents that or 
they get hit with something that prevents that. Then they just take the one unavoidable and then cannot heal. And then also Jacob Marley is a really fun piece. Ooh. Jacob Marley was kind of the proto version of like moving through a character and dealing them damage. I guess there was, what was there before him? The Shredders. The Shredders were before Jacob Marley. Modifies attack minus two. And then you could potentially do one pen damage. So it's not a lot, but Jacob Marley was only 35 points. So it was, I don't know, cool figure. Cool figure. Uh, yeah, I got to say, once again, my favorite. I'm not going to give it to Skeleton Champion. I'm just going to give it to the generic uh, generic skeleton. Quite the bony boy. Um, they're not great, but they sure are fun. And uh, I like them, of course. And all right, guys, that is going to be uh, this entire episode. I already did our cool little uh, read-through. I do want to say uh, thank you guys for listening, of course. It's a bit long. Hope you guys have a spooky, fun Halloween. You know, Feel free to write into the show uh, any spooky Halloween games you played this week or anything Hero Clicks related that you guys got. Of course, just real quick shout-out to the Patreon if you join that. You get not only cool action tokens and stickers and stuff, but you get all those sweet benefits like we mentioned before on the Discord and everything. So, yeah. Whatever Empire drops, there will be a token announcement that actually goes live. Uh, I think a few people kind of heard about it, but uh, that'll be as one of our patron exclusive (laughs) options. Uh, And also, it'll be in a video at some point in the future sometime someday somewhere and if you want to be in a video sometime someday somewhere in the future i don't know how to help you but if you're interested in empire i do know how to help you and that's by sending you to coolstuffinc.com where you can find cool stuff in stock every day including the latest hero clicks singles and sealed products so you could pre-order this empire set if you want to do that before you see what 90 percent of it is Feel free, I guess. Use code DIAL5 and you'll save 5% off of your uh, not single purchases. And uh, then for singles, you can also save 5% or more by purchasing some stuff. And you'll you'll rank up real fast. So check them out. Coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not. Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, Google, back some. Let's attack Jimmy. Because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.